open our phone to refresh, it was like 17K. And we were like, look at each other, like, the what fuck? just happened? And then we refresh it again, 30K. Refresh it again, 40K, 60K. And that was the biggest breakthrough for us because everything flipped for us because now we had cash. You have the cash to then yeah. go and execute and all the learnings and all the fuck ups that you made over the last six And it was months. like, we fucking deserve this. Yeah. It was about 140K in 24 hours. With every high, there's always a low. So much money we put into time. Like I used to sell my car. I moved to Brisbane yeah, to live with Reva. Like yeah, we, yeah. We, we was just like, we either make this work or, or we go home crying. And that's literally what it was. Your business is just a reflection of you, right? When my mentor said that to me, it like bitch slapped me so hard in the face. I was like, holy shit. We don't have like an X problem in our business. I just need to fix my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> We're so quick to bite on what's not going right. And we don't sit back and realize like, fuck, we've actually come a long way. And I think it's only yeah, recently that we've started to actually be like, okay, man, like we've been through the fucking hell. We've made it and here we are, we're still going. People are in business to make money, right? Throughout the process, you actually forget about all that. And it's more like, fuck, like I actually love the journey so much. Like this is actually so much more rewarding. Why can't you make a fuckload of money and help a fuckload of people at the same time? Amen, brother. Just quickly before we get started, guys, if you've been enjoying the podcast, can I please ask that you consider leaving a five-star review and subscribing on whatever platform you've been listening. It really helps the podcast grow. Anyway, fuck my back. Second podcast of the day. Uh, thanks for coming, boys. We've got the Pure You boys. Um, I've watched your journey from, well, how long ago did we first have that phone call? What was that two years or three years ago? June 2020. So, so three years ago almost. Yeah, wow. And um, obviously I'm in Sydney. You boys are down in Melbourne. I've watched from afar, but I've seen you guys and the brand go from strength to strength, continue to grow. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know you guys, I'll get you guys to introduce uh, Purio and, and everything you do and all the products. But Vlad Kosovac, Reva Botha, welcome to the podcast. Um, Vlad, for anyone uh, who, who's watching, if he drops – Halfway through the podcast, he's fighting it. Uh, he almost couldn't make it today. He's sick, but he's powering through like a G. So thanks for doing that. Uh, and um, let me know, boys. Let everyone listening know. Pure You, what's Pure You all about? What does the brand stand for? And what are your products? Yeah, so what we do is we sell holistic gut health and acne solutions to the um, to like mums, young mums, teenagers. And what we're what really about is what we're really passionate about is I guess. Or like it, it, I guess it all comes down to like our story too. Mm. So for us, when we first launched a brand, I suffered really bad from gut health. Um, sorry, I suffered really bad from acne all over my back. Didn't know what it was. Took so many products, um, and you know nothing worked for me. And I was like, "Fuck this!" Like I'm so like you know I'm, I'm 21. I got acne on my face, on my back, and it's debilitating. You know, living with something like that is is you know I wouldn't honestly wish it on my worst enemy. Um, so. Ever since then, we, you know, I, I linked up with Vlad. Where, where were we? It was like a, it was like a business, some sort of yeah. like a business 2000, seminar, right? In 2018, we first met at a business seminar, which yeah. is really rare. I remember you told me that ages and, ago before and we even we spoke just, properly. And it was just as the time of high smile was like proper pumping. And I remember we were just talking about like e-com brands, about like mm. brands that are, you know, really popping off at the moment. And yeah, we just kept in contact. And then, yeah. you know, the rest is history. We kind of just... Yeah. We're like, bro, let's just go into business together. <laughs> you you got to try it. You, you got to try it. And it's so funny. Um, I was just being honest. I was on a podcast once uh, and they asked like, oh, who's your inspiration for your brand? And like at that point, like me, we, we were like 2018. So for us as well, big inspiration. There were, there were a couple of brands. Bondi Sands was one, but another one was High Smile. Yeah. And, and like the, the, the question was like, oh, who, who, who inspired you for your brand? I said, High Smile. And then everyone else is like, oh, my mom. I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck, I went yeah. in the wrong direction there. <laughs> but you got to look for inspiration around you. Yeah, like you don't always have like, I know, Reva, you've got parents in business, right? Like yeah. Yeah. not everyone has that around you. And and with the power of fucking social media podcasts, you get to learn from people and hear other people's stories that might not be what you see. And then it shows you what's possible. So like seeing these two young guys, again, starting a female, predominantly female like mm. brand in terms of the customers start and, and absolutely kill it was an inspiration and I'm, conti- I'm sure they've inspired thousands of people to start sure, their brands. Yeah. Um, but yeah, talk to me about that, uh, that event you guys are at. How did you guys connect? Why do, how did you guys start thinking, fuck, should we do a business yeah. together? So Let's- we were probably the only two young guys there. Yeah. So everyone was pretty much older. Like I would say like late thirties, forties, fifties. So we were probably, so immediately we clicked because we were the only young guys there. So we sat next to each other and we just kept talking and talking. And to be honest, we were kind of bored. We were like, why are we here? And, <laughs> and this wasn't a, like a, a business seminar that was cheap. Like it was pretty, like, and it was expensive place well, to go. Well, because we were serious. We, yeah, we, we, we were wanted serious to, we, about, you know, we're at the stage like, fuck, we want to do something here. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I was in another business at the time that I was looking to exit. Um, Reva was also in another startup that he was looking yeah. to exit. So it was kind of like the world aligned for us. And we were like, let's kind of make this happen. And then it was probably not until 2019 
maybe mid that we were like, okay, let's go balls to the walls. No, I, was, I would say it would be the start. It was the start of oh, the start, because, yeah. you know, we, we did keep in contact, right? Yeah. We kept in contact. And like I said before, like when we, um, when I was, when I was going through all those things with like my own like body image, well, not really body image, but like how having acne made me feel right. I said to Vlad, dude, I've got this sick fucking idea. Probably like the hundredth time I'd said that to him anyway, because like the entrepreneur me <laughs> every single day is yeah. like thinking like, oh, I can do a business idea from that, from that, from that. I'm like, fuck. Um, but I called, I was like, dude, I got this really good fucking idea. Like I've done some research. I reckon that we should do this. And at the stage, uh, at the time, it came from a place of like, man, we're going to make millions. We're going to make fucking millions, right? We're going to be the next smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone not, thinks that. Not knowing, not knowing anything. And yeah, I just called that. I'm like, dude, let's, let, let's do something. Um, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And he's like, yeah. And then that's when sort of yeah. like peer review started. It, it actually took us about 10 months from like ideation to launch just because of the nature of the product like mm. that we launched. And honestly, man, like we started with the hardest fucking product that, yeah. you possibly, that you possibly could ever start with. Enlisted medicine with the, with, with the TGA. Yeah. And well, all we, the regulations, all that, you know. And just how much we invested as well in the start, you know. Yeah. So much money we put into a time. Like I had to sell my car. I moved to Brisbane yeah, you, to live with Reva. Like yeah, we, yeah. we, we was just like, it's balls to the wall for us. Like we, I love it, man. We either, that, we either make this work or, or we go home crying. And that's literally what it was. That's, that's the sacrifice it takes to be successful. Yeah. You got to take a risk. Like not everyone just like has like hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank to like try things. Like you got to fucking commit. Now I want to get into that whole process with your market research, all the regulations that you have to go through to obviously get something listed on the RTG. But first of all, I want to know, obviously it's been successful, so it was great, but it is always a risk when you start working with uh, a, a co-founder that you don't know all, all that well, you didn't grow up with. What, what's from your experience now, what do you think? Cause a lot of people starting businesses in, in twos and I think it's a great idea. Um, I've done both. I honestly prefer doing, doing it in twos, but what do you look for in, in, in a good co-founder? Yeah. I mean, it's something that we've probably to this day, we can say that we've, we've probably had trouble with, not because it's so much, and I wouldn't say trouble, but it's just about kind of, we, we were both extremely motivated. We're both really motivated. We're both really like natural entrepreneurs. So we knew deep down that we would make it work regardless of, 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 you know, whatever it was. And I think it's, you know, we've had to have clear communication in terms of like ourselves as, as co-founders and yeah, I think that's, there's probably more to it. Are you guys more similar or different in terms yeah, of your I strengths? Think we're, we're definitely similar. And I think that's also been uh, our biggest weakness as well because yeah. we are so similar. Mm. Um, like, don't get me wrong. We, yeah. We've definitely clashed. I mean, we clash all the time. Like we clashed like last week, probably I'm surprised we haven't clashed today, but like, <laughs> but it's funny. Like, but yeah, it's we, so this. with Vlad and I, like we, we set boundaries, right? Mm. When we have a problem. We sort out there and then it's like, I like, I've said to Vlad so many times, I'm like, dude, I've got a fucking problem with you. I don't like that you did this. I want to move through this. I'm not going to sit here and bottle it up because I'm not going to, it's going to lead to resentment. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to like, you know, like I love, I fucking love you, but like you're my brother, mm -hmm. but also a business partner. So we need to set boundaries. So I think that's the most important thing, right? When you find a business partner, someone you click with so well, it's so important to set those boundaries. Like, okay, yes, we're friends, but yes, we're also in a relationship. If you think oh, about it, right? I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, like literally being like a marriage. it's literally like a marriage. Mm -hmm. And we, we, and I think it's taken, oh, especially me. It's taken me a long time to actually realize that to be like, okay, we actually have to work on this. Like we have to work on this partnership as well as working on this yes. business. Mm. Otherwise we're going to have a shitty business and a shitty partnership. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's um, like so funny, man, because I, I know we, you, you were saying you seen him later this week. We had, as you guys know, the um, Hey Bud Boys on uh, earlier this morning. And the thing about them that's so good is like there's three of them and they couldn't be more different, each one of them. Yeah. It's like yeah, all these like really analytical and, and, and all the ops and across the data. Uh, Alex is really like, public and, and the brand and, and, and does all the, like a lot of their speaking yeah. and Fidel's like the marketing, but he's perfectly in the middle of all of them. Yeah. And it's so distinct, but I saw you guys, you have more of a similar energy. That was like me and George two yeah. founders, similar strengths and weaknesses. But like when you come into a business and it's like, we were yeah, mid twenties, early twenties, you don't have like a lot of training about communication in certain Correct. situations or, you know, how to, you know, communicate ideas effectively. You know what I mean? It, it can get, it can get, tricky, but you got to learn on the job. As long as like you 100%. fucking communicate through that yeah. stuff, I feel like, and both people have the best intentions of the, of the yeah. business. Like you, you'll, you'll get through it. Yeah. I think that's what we've, we've learned now is that, you know, just communicating with each other and mm. really just trying to understand that we both want what's best for the business mm. and nothing that we say to each other is with, is with resentment or with any sort of malice or hate. Mm. It's always to do with, okay, like we want what's best for the business and let's just try and move forward from that. But I think that's always like yeah. always what it's always come down to as well. Like, 
you know, it's for the business, right? You have to put your own personal interests aside because at the end of the day, you want your business to succeed more than anything, right? So fuck how you feel about each other. Fuck like, you know, the resentment, whatever you bottle up, but it's not about that. Like what comes, what actually comes first? It's like a baby. Like what comes first? You got to put yourself aside. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would honestly say like, it's probably like for the first two years of business, we had the worst communication, dude. Yeah. Like, and we, we can openly say that. And like, we can, yeah. It, it was terrible. Like we didn't communicate. We bottled things up. And I would say it was probably until like, probably like a good six months ago. It was just before Black Friday. We like, we had a, like a, probably like a fucking like six hour phone call. Wow. And we were like, we had a really big breakthrough. Cause like, dude, like we can't, the business actually cannot move forward unless we figure out our shit. Yeah. So I'm going to lock myself in my room. You're going to fucking do the same and we're going to sort the shit out. And ever since then, it's been amazing. Like yeah. when we have a problem, we just sort it out. Yeah. yeah. What was the, what, what, what did you come down to? What was the solution? How are you going to move forward in a, in a, in a, in a more cohesive way moving forward? Well, okay. So what it came to, what it came to j- just setting boundaries, right? Saying to Vlad and, and him saying to me, whenever you have a problem, just pick up the phone and say, dude, I've got a problem with you and I want you to help me work through this right now. Yeah. And also just right. there's times of showing up for each other. Yeah. So there's no times where I want him to take on more stress than me or me take on more stress than him. It's like, we're in this together. So let's do it together. If you feel like I'm taking on more, you're taking on more then let's, let's talk about it. And let's, let's actually get through this. It's like, it's like a brother, right? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like an extra brother, like you, you hate each other, but you love each other. But yeah. Yeah. Obviously, and that's, we're, and that's we're a little bit like, older. We don't actually hate yeah, each other. Yeah, not anymore. Man, I couldn't no, imagine. Yeah. Uh, my brothers work with me heaps of times. It'd be yeah. fucking be hard to do a business yeah. with your brother. Um, yeah, like what, what the boys were saying today. Like they have every two weeks from the start of business, they have like accountability sessions, community, like where they just give each other all the feedback, everything that's on their chest, and get it out. Yeah. And that's helped us. Same as in a relationship. Mm. If you don't communicate how you truly feel, it's not going to fucking work out. But like you said, and and I know I had to adjust to this personally. Cause it's like when you have two people or more, more than two people coming into a business and you've both got so much confidence and you both have really strong ideas, you both want the same thing as in you both want the business to succeed. And it's like, I don't even like back then before I really knew and understood business and communication more. It's like, even back then I would prioritize the business being successful over me being right hundred percent of the time. But it's just, sometimes it's hard to do that when you think and you're so confident that your way is the, is the best way forward. What, what do you do now that you've kind of learned from experience, um, doing things right, fucking it up, not communicating the best. If you both have such like strong ideas, right? How do you, and, and they're, and they're different. How do you work through that and get to a, a resolution that you're, you're comfortable with? Well, okay. So two years ago, like that first initial two years, we would just clash. I'd like, be like, oh, my idea is better because of this or my idea is better because of that. And it like no, nothing really happened. It was more like it would just fizzle out or one it. of us would give and go, okay, whatever, dude, fucking whatever. <laughs> but like since like, I would say, yeah, a good part of six months, it comes down to, okay, because we all have our individual roles, it comes down to, okay, what's the goal? You want to do that? I want to do that. What is the overarching goal? Okay, does it meet that? Does this one or that one? No, okay. We, and then we just move towards whatever yeah. it is because we've both said, okay, well, we're putting our own like individual interests aside and business comes first and whatever the goal that we're working towards. And um, yeah, that's what we yeah, do. Yeah, that's the way forward. It's tricky. Mm. It's tricky. Like, oh, yeah, and we're still working on it. Like, it's not something that we've, you know, we've, you know, we've mastered, but. Mm. You know. And not saying that we have the perfect relationship, but like, yeah. I don't think there's such a thing anyway. But I just think like setting boundaries is so important. And also, you know, um, keeping each other accountable, like yeah. every single week, every single, because like I, I actually live in Brisbane. So every single Friday, we'll Zoom, have an hour Zoom. Dude, what are you doing? I'm doing this. And like, you know, we have a Google spreadsheet where we just put all of us, and we have a Slack channel now. Yeah. So we, we, we're messaging there every day. So how long were you guys living in, in the same state for? So January, 2020. So just before COVID actually hit, I, oh, moved, fuck. I, moved, I moved to Brizzy <laughs> and I lived there for about a year and a half. And then once we grew a little bit bigger, I moved back to Melbourne and I kind of took over things in, in, in Melbourne. Um, but that was also tough as well because I wasn't living with him anymore. Mm. I actually had to be better at communicating mm. and which was even, it was know, even such harder. a fucking yeah. situation. Yeah. <laughs> Business partners yeah. living together, yeah, so. packing orders. And so you in, can in imagine the, the like we, clash, we just clash so much. Yeah. And you know, you have to understand as well that business is very stressful. Mm. So most of the time when we clashed, it was not, we clashed over bullshit. It's just because yeah. we're stressed. Yeah. How do we make things happen? How do we, you do this? How, if he doesn't have the answer, I ask him why he doesn't have the answer. He yeah. asks me why I don't have the and answer. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's just this revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we had absolutely no fucking clue what we were doing. Yeah. Like mm. we, we literally, it's so funny. We spent like 10 months on product, mm. like 
so much R and D went into it. All our money went into it. We launched a week later, COVID. <laughs> and we were looking at each other like, dude, what the fuck have we got yeah. it, like got ourselves into here? And we thought we would just have a website and would make millions. We had no idea what Facebook ads was. We yeah. we didn't even have any money left over for marketing. We had no idea. And we just thought, I was like, dude, move up here because our stock's going to be delivered to our warehouse soon, a little storage unit. And the, the, the website's going live in two weeks. And from that date, we're probably going to make a million. So like, I need you to move up here and help me pack orders. It's going to go crazy. Like, uh, all the shit. <laughs> All right, guys, just quickly, I've got some news. I've spent close to the past 18 months building the ultimate program that takes you through the complete process. And I mean the complete process of launching and scaling your very own e-commerce brand from zero all the way up to a million dollars plus per year. And now with this program, what you're going to get access to is 15 modules with over 100 training videos and 23 hours of in-depth content, taking you through everything you need to know to build a successful e-com brand. And this is the important part. This isn't just stuff that you can look up on YouTube. This is stuff I've taken from real lessons and experiences building Happy Skin Co. from zero all the way up to an eight figure per year brand. You're going to get access to loads of custom tools, templates and calculators that I've used to build and run Happy Skin Co. There's going to be one-on-one -on -one mentoring with myself and other expert coaches. And there's also weekly group Q&A calls with myself to make sure you're feeling completely supported throughout the entire process. And now what I've learned from consulting to everyone from people starting their very first e-commerce brand all the way up to brands already doing seven figures plus per year is that there's a process and a framework to follow if you want to be successful with e-com. Now, if this is something you're interested in, hit the link below and go to join.viralbrandbuilder.com. All the information's there and you can book a call directly with me. Otherwise, send me a DM and we can chat there. Anyway, let's get back to the pod. And All he, the businesses like like Happy Skin Co that did yeah. that fucking put, painted the unrealistic expectations. Yeah. So many guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> dude, you couldn't write the script for, for for us any better, man. Like it's fucking ridiculous. But in terms of like, we did a lot of things right. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there was a lot of hard work, and and there was obviously an element of like intuition and skill involved. But it's the perfect example of product product market fit. Yeah, perfect product, perfect time. Hadn't really been done before. And it just fucking exploded. But for a lot of people, it's not like that. Now you move up there. The expectation is, fuck it. We're going to be doing hundred K a yeah. week from like month number one, month yeah. number two. What, what was the thoughts going through your head? Was there any self doubt in those early stages where things were quieter or you knew that like a part of you knew that fuck it, it's just going to be Definitely. a long grind. I think it was so much self doubt. You know, I had invested literally every, every bit of money I had into this business, moved out to Brisbane. And I'm like, if this doesn't work, I'm literally fucked. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? And to be honest, and it wasn't until in June 2020 when we spoke to you, when I reached out to you and I said, hey, man, like this is our business. We have no money. We've got fucking products just sitting in a storage <laughs> yeah. unit. And we don't know how to sell it. Like, man, like any advice you can give us. And I remember I, I remember vividly what you said to us and you, you, you said to us, you're like, boys, it seems like you've got a good business here. It seems like, it, you know, you've got something that, you know, you can, you know, that can really take off. But what I would suggest is, you know, Give it your all for the next three months, absolutely everything. And if you can't, sorry, if it doesn't like take off, take everything that you've learned from the business and move on to something else. Yeah, wow. And I remember vividly because after that phone call, we went into it because uh, Brisbane was in lockdown then and we went into his garage and we had a workout. And I remember we kind of stayed silent for a little bit and then we like looked at each other. I'm like, bro, we've literally got nothing to lose. We go all out now for three months. Let's just fucking find out ways we can sell this product. Let's just send it out to fucking every influencer. What's one thing that we have that, that other businesses don't have. We've got a lot of products, so let's yeah, just fucking send it that. out. So we just started sending out the product and really trying to, you know, nail nail our messaging, our marketing, and then from there it kind of like, okay, fuck, because there's a bit of traction here. There's there's a freedom in that complete and utter devotion into one thing. If you like, yeah. if you've already made the decision that you're going to give it everything and go all out, yeah, then kind of the fear of failure, yeah, like it's always there, but it's like you know what, fuck it, I'm going to do yeah. it. You know what I mean? So many people don't even start because of fear of failure Correct. or they have a business and like, they've got some, like they ordered a hundred products. Like they got them like, Oh, I don't know how to sell them. But like they don't really give it all because yeah. they know they've got an out inside the head. If they didn't give it at all and it fails, it's like, oh, I didn't really try anyway. Yeah. I didn't really give it my all anyway. But it's like the scariest thing sometimes is just to fucking be okay with failing and yeah. just trying everything. But that's what it takes to be successful. Like when I said about me and George, why we, like being so successful so quick, do we were fucking working like 18 hour days every day? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it doesn't just happen by luck. Correct, yeah. Um, 
So that's awesome, boys. Now let's talk about that process, how you, you had to invest all your money and like a 10 months worth of time into the product development phase because why your product's different to a lot of the other ones on the market, I'm not sure if some competitors have moved in now after seeing some of your success, but like a lot of your like things are based around the scientifically proven yeah. ingredients and products, right? So I, I wear this on the ARTG. Um, I know it's not an, e- an easy process to necessarily to, to do, especially from the start when you didn't have any money. Ours came in, we had to do it after we'd already launched. So that, yeah. that was the whole other fucking drama as yeah, you can right. imagine getting that letter. You can't do this. Yeah. Like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? Like you can't just change overnight. Anyway, we, we got through that. But what did the process look like for you guys to be able to do that from day one? Because like you said, pretty fucking hard. Not Most people wouldn't wouldn't pick a product they needed to do all the R&D on and formulations on from, from the start. Yeah. Well, we actually, well, like I knew what we wanted to do because like for me, like going back into my journey with acne, right, I knew that. Well, I didn't know, but I network network with a few professionals about the power of gut health and like what that actually means. Like, why do people actually get acne? And a lot of the time it relates to gut health, right? So throughout that phase for 10 months, we networked with some gut health microbiologists, some actual scientists who do this shit, and they helped us formulate the product. And that took 10 months. 10 or months. Um, and yeah, just going from there was it was a constant struggle. Like we launched and we, we didn't even know, like we had to, oh, like now we we're permitted by these claims. We can't say anything else. So the TJ would say, no, you can't say that. It's like, fuck, well, well, what can we say? They're like, well, it's here in black and white within these four corners of this document. That's all you can say. And we're looking at each other saying, well, dude, we've got no money to market our product now. We've, no, well, we've pumped everything into this yeah. brand. We've got no money to market it. And we, we, we can only say this. Obviously we're not claiming it's curing anything, right? But mm-hmm. it's like two young guys who know absolutely nothing what they're doing, have no experience. It's so daunting. It's like, yeah. fuck. Like, now we have to stick to a what script have we, of what we can sell yeah, and how we can sell it. It's just like, how the fuck do we make this work? What have we got ourselves into? Yeah. But I think, I think, yeah, like, you know, because the product took that long to formulate and then COVID hit, it was, it was a big slap in the face for us. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, like you said in the garage, like when you said to me, like, dude, like we you know, got nothing to lose. It's like, well, fuck, like we actually can't afford to stop now because, yeah. and just throw it in. Like we, we've literally put everything into this, especially the last 10 months, like doing like 10 hour days. And you see, you sold your car for that, right? Yeah, man. What's going through your head? Like, I know, I know we had that phone, but what's ha, ha, like, what, what, what switches over? Like, what, what do you make? Like, do you make a commitment to yourself that you're just going to fucking go? Yeah, it was just one of those things is, uh, you know, we had the conversation like, man, we got to make this work. And I remember just saying to myself, like, I don't give a fuck how I'm just going to make it work. And like, mm. if I've got to work 20 hour days, if I've got to fucking not sleep. If I've got to be homeless, I'm fucking make it work. Yeah. And yeah. And then that was kind of the switch and the trigger that I had that really made it made the difference. And, and I think it's not until your back's really up against the wall yeah. that you kind of get that mentality of like, fuck, we've got to make this work. And it's also that Eastern European yeah. vibe yeah. about, you know, um, definitely. Yeah. So we, we, we have that phone call. You're like, fuck it. We've got to sell these things. I saw not long after that. I don't know if it was six months later or a year later, start seeing the articles come up 500 K yeah. in like a year or whatever. Like you, yeah. you clearly started doing something right. How did you start moving all that product? Well, how did you sell those original, however, a few hundred, few thousand units? Yeah, and what a lot of people don't understand as well is like when people start e-com brands, they have about a hundred units. We had 5,000 units. Yeah, that's and a that lot was, to start. And yeah, that, we, was our minimum, that was our minimum order value. Yeah. So people need to understand that like we were f- like fucked if we didn't sell this. Like That's so much that's money. It, yeah. yeah. Like so we had to fork out so much money just for the initial, just to start it. We didn't, we couldn't have, we couldn't formulate a hundred products and be like, let's test it. It yeah. was 5,000 or nothing. Cause it's, cause it's a process yeah. like with TJ listed products, right? You, there's no MOQs. Yeah. The MOQ is like 5,000 and on a $20 product, like do the math. Like that's multiple. Six yeah. Years. Yeah. A lot of money. Um, but it was great. Like I think your in, from your initial message in, um, in June. Yeah. From then we were like so hungry. We we're like, fuck it. We're going to hustle. And then we had our first six figure month multiple six figure month in November. No, yeah. September. September yeah. So Crazy. it was insane. So we just went ham on like PR networking yeah. influences. Sending our product. It was nuts. Yeah. I saw you guys doing a lot of PR. I thought yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you guys doing that. I'm telling you the way you guys are speaking about that, man, you're going to inspire so many people here in this, like the next generation of e-com fucking boys and girls are going to hear this. And I'm telling you, I'm jeez me up just hearing about it now. Uh, before we move on to kind of the next step or, and, and the phase of like, okay, actually scaling it up to be um, a more s- substantial business. Uh, I want to go back again because you, you guys said that you couldn't pick the harder product to start with. What about it was so challenging 
do you think? I just think because of the nature of the product, like we did our research. It's like, okay, for us to have, for, for our consumer to have this level of, of benefit taking our product, they have to spend five times the amount taking, our, taking competitors product and five different products. So for us, it's like, well, had, could, because we knew people were doing that. We knew that they were taking like up to six, seven products of all these powders and potions to get like, to fix their gut health, to fix their acne. And it's like, well, how can we simplify this? Right. And so just the nature, I think just the nature of the product itself, it's because it's a 20 day commitment. Right. And it's an intense thing. So that's essentially what made it so hard for us. And have you had, now that you've had like the six, are there like direct competitors that have tried to replicate kind of what you guys have done? It's actually funny. We speak about this all the time. When we say like, oh, is there any competitors? We just literally say, because of the process of what it takes to make our product, we literally like, good good luck. Literally (laughs) good luck. If you want to go go do it, go ahead. I wish you all all the luck because to make a product like ours, it is fucking hard. Mm. Takes a lot of time. And that's why we say like, you know, if there's a competitor, go ahead. Like, I'd love to see how you, how you go about doing it. So we've obviously had more competitors in terms of our branding because we, we kind of nailed our branding in terms of what we wanted to show. And so we've had competitors in terms of trying to copy our branding, but the product itself, not really. And that just comes down to, yeah, what we, cause we were really niche. So, and we know how hard it is to make a product like that. So. Yeah. It's so funny, man. I talk to George all the time yeah. um, and he's got a new business now, like in the hair care space, like masks, shampoos, that sort yeah. of stuff. And he laughs at me, man. He's like, ah, oh, bro, we, we started on the hardest product. Cause yeah. think about the product. Like it's, it's pretty high level tech. Like we're registered with FDA and the ARTG. So it's like pretty yeah. high level. It's a medical product in the eyes of like the regulatory body. So there's a lot of hoops to jump through. It's like, not only is ours a 20 day process like yours, it's like can take two to three months to see full results yeah. and like all the shit we had to go through, but it makes it worth it. But the difference between you and me uh, and Happy Skin Co is like, we were very early in the market. Like I, I didn't see anyone to me were first to market, but that could have been in, in the other side of the world. But what that meant, although now we own our multiple, like our own patents, we create our own products. It was very easily as China saw the success of us and other manufacturers started to, to, to copy ours. It was so easy for competitors to pop up. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like yeah. within a, 18 months of, of, of the business, we had like hundreds of competitors that we were aware of. Direct competitors, stealing our content, copying our branding, all that sort of stuff. So it's just, funny hearing other people's perspectives. Now I know your branding is really good. Like who did that? How did you nail that branding? Was it internal work with a really cool, like external team? How'd you guys get that? So, right. Well, shout out to Lauren at Just Saying Girl. She did all our branding. She's, she, she was fantastic, right? She did our branding from the start, but the idea was that we, you know, we wanted to have a really good product, but we also wanted to make, we wanted to make it fun. Cause like, let's be honest, gut health isn't sexy. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of very yeah. fun so, topic to talk about. So, so we wanted to make it, yeah, so it we, looks a little bit fun. <laughs> We wanted a brand that people could actually connect with, right? And so that's what we went to to um, to Lauren with, yeah. And ever since then, like I think that's been the, probably one of the biggest things. Like we can really, because because we know our consumer really well, we were able to really connect with them, like on that emotional level, and you know, like not downplay like gut health, but like just make it a little bit fun and like interesting and like a bit sexy, you know. So because yeah, that was so funny, like having that call with you guys, even back then, like your content, your website was so like like high end and you're like, fuck it, we don't have any money. So I'm like, how did you guys spend all your money to get to this point? But you're stuck from now. So it's just fucking funny, man. But it's also the fact that we, we can openly put our hand up now and say that we put money in the wrong places. For sure. Yeah. But you had no choice. You couldn't have done the, like there was no other way. Mm. And you know, we, yeah, we know now that obviously it's the wrong thing to do. And if we were to start again, it'd be like, fuck, why would we, we'd never ever do that. But yeah, we didn't know. Mm. And you only learn after you've done them and made the mistakes. Do you think if you were starting again, like, do you think it's possible to like, because I know like contract manufacturers and stuff like that, especially when you're making new formulations, there's not a lot of flexibility with a lot of them. Like, do you think on reflection, you could have maybe got it down to 3000 units. So you had a bit left or like, it was just, that was the only option to do 5,000. I think looking back, they also saw two young guys who had no fucking clue what they were doing. And maybe, maybe they took advantage of us. Maybe not. We probably should have done our due diligence and, and, and known that, but um. <sighs> I think every manufacturer out there, when it comes to TJA products, it yeah, the, the MOQ is MOQ, and if you because they deal with massive corporations, yeah. billion dollar, like like you know, like companies like Swiss, you know, it's like crazy. So two young guys coming trying to start a gut trying health. to start a yeah. trying to start a brand, yeah. yeah they don't, like, who are we, right? <laughs> like obviously, with your product gut health, you say it's not sexy, but it's definitely been trending upwards in the last few years. Now I know you've got multiple products now. In terms of when you're looking for a product whether it be the hero product or you're now releasing like uh, supplementary products, new products, what are you looking for in like a product that, you know, is 
got a high likelihood of being successful about having the actual demand in the market for people to buy it. So we look for a market with massive pain, right? And, and then we go, okay, like how can you reverse engineer what's currently offered in the market and make that a thousand times better? And then taking it a step further, how can we then emotionally connect our consumer to that product mm. and make them aware of why this is so much better, but not just so much better, but actually connect the audience with why they need the solution. Right. You, you speak about that, um, about, you know, creating a brand that people can genuinely connect with. Like, how do you go and execute that? Cause a lot of people will try and say that, but to then go and execute it and actually educate them in a way that they understand that is different. How did you guys go about that? I think it just came down to knowing, our, knowing a our consumer, right. And building community. Yeah. That's literally what it came down to. I think the most important thing that econ brands can do these days and you know, is, is building that community mm-hmm. and knowing your avatar, like knowing your consumer really well, knowing what kind of language you know, they like, and, and knowing what kind of things like they like to consume, right? Yeah. So the more you know about them, the more you know how to actually emotionally connect with them. And, 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 and the point that you, like, cause you had your branding pretty good from the start, but no matter how good you get, so like you, you nail your branding or you think, you know, your customer at the start, it's going to change and evolve as the business grows, as you get real data, real feedback yeah. from the market. Now, the point that it starts to like, things start to really happen for you, you start to build that momentum what do you think it was like that change? Like, what do you guys do differently? Was it a new marketing channel? What changed that allow you to start like finding some scale? I think yes, we also, like Reva was saying, we, we, we heavily focused on not trying to just get sales, but try and build a community. Mm-hmm. And we wanted people to understand what gut health was about. And we also wanted to educate people, which is what Acacia, his, you know, he, uh, his partner and also the founder who's been um, really heavily working on is like, how do we build a community? How do we get people to understand how important gut health is. If someone doesn't know the, you know, the, the gut health, the gut and skin link. Okay. Well, how do we explain it to them? And then from there, we were able to build a, a community to that really, you know, love the brand and, and love the products. Yeah. Because we didn't just launch the, we didn't, we didn't just go, okay, let's launch this product. Right. I remember, you know, it like first coming in with the idea because you know, the product itself is based on my own, my partner's own personal experience, like having that. And so we know how a consumer feels having that, having acne and like the pain and you know, like the low confidence that comes with that. So that's why we're so like, I think part of our branding, we've done that so well, cause we just really, we know so well how to connect with them. Cause we know yeah. the position they're in because we were there. Right. It's like, you know, we know how to help you just, you know what I mean? Like they're trying to actually formulate that. Yeah. I, I- a, a big theme with the podcast as well isn't just business. It's about like, um, you know, like mindset, personal development, but mental health is a big part of that. Um, no matter how successful people are, like a lot of people, if you look back, you're going to have insecurities. Now, obviously you had a problem. Not everyone's just going to build a business, you know, exactly. to, to solve the problem. And now I don't have acne and I've got like a lot of money in the bank. Apart from that, like what have you done over the years to, you know, improve your mental health, your confidence and be able to like, because every successful person, you need to have habits and rituals inside your life Definitely. to be able to, you know, perform at your best or at least, you know, perform at your best or at least be able to show up every day and be accountable for what you need to do True. because you can't just throw it all in when you're in business. If, if you're an e-com startup, like sure, sales might be sweet for a couple of weeks, but if you just switch off and check out, your business will start to fall apart quickly. So what are some of the things that you've done? I know obviously being at, that you met at a mm-hmm. business event, you got clearly into and interested in personal development, but yeah, talk me through that stuff for you guys. Yeah. I mean, look, it's definitely been one of those ones that me personally, that I, that I'm, I'm big into personal development and, and I will like, before I met Reva, I was also big into it as well. And I know Reva was as well. And that's probably, you know, why we met. It was like a business, it was like a personal development and business seminar that we yeah. actually went to. So. so in terms of like, you know, what I've, I've started journaling a lot, um, yeah. which is something that I found, uh, that's helped me a lot. Also, not just in business, just in my personal life. Um, I lost my dad last year, which was tragic. And, um, I was actually lost for a while, like in terms of like, I felt um, my, my purpose in my life was kind of like all over the shop. And I found that meditating and journaling kind of like grounded me and, and kind of put me back on track for, for a lot of things. And sometimes like people don't understand the power of journaling to the power of just being grateful for things that you have in your life that people don't even realize, like, man, it's like waking up, having a cup of coffee, like being grateful for that. And just, yeah, being, and, and it made me also appreciate obviously Reva and, and, and the people that are close to me in my life. So yeah, if I can recommend one thing, I'd definitely say journaling. And it's, it's something that that's changed, changed a lot, like changed everything. for me. Yeah. And it and it sucks that at times it takes like a tragedy like yeah. that to, to, to show you, you know, that what you have to be yeah. grateful for and, and, and unlock that new thing. But Reva, what, what do you think would be for you, for yourself? The biggest thing that 
my, well, one of my biggest realizations in business, and I, I answer this question the same every single time, is that your business is just a reflection of you, right? And that for me was the biggest trigger for me because when my mentor said that to me, it like bitch slapped me so hard in the face. I was like, holy shit. So the things that I've been doing in my life, all these shadows, all these demons that come out, I can actually now see this um, in my business. Yeah. And it's like, holy fuck. So, you know, we don't have like an X problem in our business. I just need to fix my fucking head <laughs> in a way, and you know, you, yeah. you, you know, it, that's honestly what it boils down to. It's yeah. just personal development and, and, and I've invested. And honestly, the best investment you can ever make is yourself. Yep. It really Always. is yourself. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so many people have said that now. You, do you know Ben Goodman from Sylvie and yeah. stuff? Yeah, he mm. said the same thing. The guys before, like uh, earlier today, said the same thing. Some, some particularly males, I feel like some of them won't want to buy into that. Like yeah. you see the ones that just want to flash there, you know, I'm on a yacht, oh, I'm flying business, I got my fence, but that's all fake. I, it's all bullshit. Man. I know. I call them the fake, the fake business people because we've got like this group in Melbourne where we're like the entrepreneurs group where we're kind of like – you know, people that want to achieve things. And we've got a word for them. We call them the fake business people, not because of what they've achieved, but because of how they act and who they are. And I feel like they're not successful um, because they only think that money is the only driver for success. And the one that you realize are actually successful, the ones that you know take the time to actually work on themselves and they're not posting the flashy things, the ones that are, you know, you know, that, that are kind of grounded all, all, all through life. And and there's a lot of them. And I think social media has a big part to play in, in a lot of that. Oh, dude, I couldn't have said that better myself, yeah. man. But it's, they're all the ones like very often it's, it's look, look, it's easy to make money when, when a market's doing really well, but look at them all disappear when things don't go exactly. well because they've created this facade that doesn't fucking exist. Yeah. That isn't real to con people, to scam people, to think that there's someone that they're not. But it's like, there's so much more about life than fucking money. Like business is like the reason I love business or the reason I love e-com because it's a vehicle that allows me to do what I want. And, and, and that's experienced life in the, in the way that I, you know, you know, want to, in the way I want to do that. It's not just about buying fucking Gucci and Louis and all this shit. You know what I mean? 100%. I think another massive, uh, I think another aspect to that is that they, they avoid doing the shit and doing the work because of all the things that come up. Oh, for sure. All the demons that come up, all the triggers and all the shadows that they now have to now deal with like for me, when I first got into PD, right? I paid my, I paid my coach, right? And we're working all this, all through these things. I think for like two weeks, I didn't say a word to anyone because I could like literally see all my demons. I'm like, holy fuck. I literally do that. I do that. I do that. That's fucked. That's fucked. That's fucked. Yeah. Like, you know, everywhere I looked, I was like, holy shit. Like everything's surfaced and it forces you to step out of your shadow and deal with it. And I think that's another reason why, because your ego flares up and goes, nah, that's that's shit. Why do you do that? Like, why? It's like, dude. Well, like, do you want your business to grow? Like, do you do what do you actually value? Like, you do, do you want to be an entrepreneur? Like, do you want to be successful? And like, it's not just business. Like, do you want your life to get better? Your relationships mm, to get better to get deeper? Because it's like, I feel like with my personal experience, anyway. Like, as a guy, like going into like your like mid. If you're in your mid twenties, you can be fulfilled by certain things. But as you get older, it's like you start to realize, and you like you, things start to run their course, and you realize that like. If you, if you really want to be happy, you can't just like build the blocks on top anymore. You've got to go back yeah. down to, 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 to the foundations, to your past, whether it be adolescence, whether it be childhood. And it's so funny, man. And it's, I've been really, really, really into personal development for six, seven years now. Um, and I've got friends that on paper had more tra traumatic experiences that not like not trauma, but things that had to visibly heal from, from, you know, different times and different experiences in their life. And I didn't think I had any, but like on, upon reflection the last year, man, they're, they're there for everyone. Yeah. And like, you That's might a, not realize it. Yeah, it's a scary part. Until you get into a certain situation and then there's a trigger that makes you actually think about why you act and behave in that way. And like some, they go back so far mm -hmm. and it's like, but you, you have to, it sounds such a fucking funny word. And some guys will roll their eyes when you say, but doing the work, like it's fucking, it's, it's what you got to do. Just like communication in a relationship, you know what I mean? In, in a business partnership, if you don't do that, man, you're going to be limited. Yeah, definitely. Well, everything's just a reflection of you. You don't like certain things because you do those things. Mm -hmm. And that's a massive trigger. Like everyone. Or, tr or, or you avoid them because doing them makes you feel something that you don't understand why you feel that yet. That's a trigger. And 
sometimes like people will avoid those triggers for so many years and, and they don't even really know why. But then what I found anyway is like sometimes facing those things, it's actually not even that bad. You've just been avoiding it. Like your, your instinct is to avoid it in those situations and people that make you feel that way. Mm. But if you go back and face the, the thing that making you feel that way or that, you know, inner anxiety, it's actually not fucking that bad. Like you're protecting something you were scared of or hurt you when you were eight years old half the time. Exactly. You, you can move past that. Exactly. Yeah, but, your, but your ego buries it to protect you. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my brain, all our brains do so many things to protect ourselves. And like me personally, it served me in so many ways. But now like I've spoken about this a little bit on the podcast before. It's like where, where I've had to really reflect and, and do like really reflect and, you know, work through things in myself is like being in a, in a, in a serious relationship now. It's like you only get presented with, you know, certain things like, or compromises when you're in that sort of relationship and you realize, holy shit, I can't just continue going down that path or I'm, I'm always going to stay this, you know, 27 year old kid. I'm never going to grow up past that point. So mm. Mm, interesting. All good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we had some technical difficulties, but we're all good. Now let's jump back to, to the business stuff. Now, what was the marketing channels that you started to pull the levers you started to pull when you started to scale? A lot of people say they started to really fucking understand Facebook ads, but what was it for you guys? Facebook ads. Yeah. yeah. It was Facebook ads. Yeah, literally Facebook ads and really understanding our, our <laughs> ideal customer. And then when we understood our ideal customer, it was literally just pitching to them and, and selling to them and, and letting them understand that they need this product. But we had no idea how to do Facebook ads. So like any startup, any e-commerce, let's hire a media buyer, right? Let's make two, three X row ass and lose thousands of dollars because you don't know our numbers. Yep. Yep. None Talk to that. me about not knowing your numbers. I didn't know my numbers at the start. Um, luckily, Luckily, we were very profitable, so it didn't matter. But I hired um, my cousin, who, who's so smart uh, as our finance manager, had proper like big corporate experience managing like billion dollar projects and stuff. And all the stuff he showed me, if we didn't get him in when we did, bro, we we already cost ourselves hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit, if not millions. And if he if he didn't come in, then fuck me, man. Jesus, the With shit it, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. It's yeah, such exactly. a cliche, you know what I mean? We're the same. We've probably lost multiple six figures. Yeah. And like the high. Just from not knowing numbers. Just, yeah. Just from all the, sh- all the mistakes we made and specifically not knowing our numbers. We were at a stage where we were, you know, we, we, we had a media buyer, we had multiple media buyers, you know, and some months we'd make like 40, 50 K, sometimes 80 K. We'd be like, fuck, this is so awesome. Like we're making bank. But going back now, when we looked at like, you know, when we went back and look, looked at our numbers, we were losing 25 K a month. And that was the, that was a minimum 25 K a month. Yeah. It's, it's tricky as well, because like, I feel like a lot of e founders, they, they don't know the numbers because they don't really know what to look for and how to do them. But like, sometimes like it's easier not to know. Mm. And like, there's like Correct. a fear of knowing what, knowing the numbers is going to tell you. And they don't want to face that because it's going to hurt their ego. It's avoidance. It's, it's avoidance, yeah. but mm. it's avoidance till it gets to the point where you look at your bank account and you're like, oh shit. There's a money going. I got to yeah. get rid of some stuff or I got to, you know, do something drastic. And then there's no choice but to act or you just lose all your money. It, 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 you know, you avoid to a point where it's too late and you like, now you have to. And that's when people fuck up. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, cause you're desperate. You're desperate, right? What's, what's, what's the biggest thing or the biggest like mistake you've made with money or the thing you've wasted the most money on in your journey? Fuck. Probably we've been there's a lot of ways. Yeah, to answer this a lot, well, I, yeah. There's so many answers to this question. I think it's, where we've put our money into, like the, the, for example, when we first started, we invested money into a PR agency and we hadn't, we, it's absolutely, not, yeah. absolutely no, we, there's no point any, any, any starting econ brand. I literally will say that's the last thing you'll ever need to do. It's where yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's something you pull as all the other foundations Correct. are firing and it's like to take that. We also got things like LinkedIn now. Correct. Mm. So you, it's you really don't need to. Yeah. yeah. And you know, an agency, um, yeah, media buying agency. I recommend any any econ brand that's starting out. Do it yourself for the first. You know, get, wrap your head around uh, around media buying and learn to do it. Do it yourself, and then when you know you're making a bit it's of money, not man. it's not a sustainable yeah. it's not sustainable to start because one. Okay, I'll tell you why it's not, why it's not sustainable, right? So let's just say media buying is only twenty five percent of the equation. So a media buyer doesn't know your numbers. They don't know your market. They don't know your avatar. They don't even know your product half the time. Like, look at us. Like, like we even struggle to sell our product sometimes, right? Well, not now, but so we used to. How are they going to know? Yeah. And yeah. you have to source the creators, pay the creators, make the captions, do everything. So like, why are you paying someone just to fill out a linear process on Facebook to make your ag alive? Why? Mm. And if you lose money, they don't care. 
Right. You still have to pay them. That's the thing. Yeah. Some of, some of our biggest ones uh, was were agencies as well. And it's not even, it's not even like, oh, the ROAS was shit. It's like the direction sometimes, like some of the, one of my biggest regrets in the journey was like taking advice from agencies that I didn't even agree with myself, but yeah. like, because no, 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 trust me, we're the experts. You're yeah. Look, you got, you got a good product. You've been successful, but like you're, you're ex, you know, 25 years old, you know, we know. And like going against your gut when you go against your gut and it doesn't work out and it really fucking costs you like a lot of, like you could have been so much further along. That's what stings the most. Yeah, you sure. know what I mean? Another reason why it's so unconventional, right? And it hurts, like pains me because if you don't understand how it works, like Facebook ads, right? How can you keep your media buyer accountable, right? Oh, for sure. If you, if they tell you, dude, I just got you a 2X row ass. I like, you know, we spent a thousand dollars and you got two grand back. Like, dude, like validate me. I'm so good. <laughs> it's not about that. And they like, always okay, that. Yeah. Now let's look at the numbers, right? Let's actually boil it down to the dollar. Like, okay, variable costs, fixed costs. Okay. Oh, shit, I'm actually not fucking profitable. Mm -hmm. And for us, we, that was the case for two years. And that's also what boiled down to a lot of like, I, I wouldn't say relationship breakdown, but like communication breakdown, which like resulted in not a really good like relationship because of all these things we didn't know and all these expectations we had. Right. Mm. So it wasn't until we got so clear on like every aspect of our business by virtue of working on ourselves, yeah. then things started to pick up. Yeah. Such a weird thing. Right. And what, what did you guys do to actually get a better understanding of the numbers? Cause not like, you know, to, to do some do consul um, consulting and work with a lot of people in, in e-com, a lot of them just starting off, they have no idea about their numbers. They don't know how, to, like, how, don't even know what COGS is, let alone how to calculate it and, yeah. and what sort of multiple they need if they're going to be profitable, right? What was it for you guys meeting with an accountant? Like, what was it that actually told, like, pulled your head in line to be like, nah, this is what we have to work towards. If not, we're just flushing money down the toilet. Um. Well, initially it came down to like, fuck, we're running out of money. Like that's when you, that's when you really yeah. find out, okay, fuck, like, something's we're, gone we're wrong. Make, we're making yeah. sales. We're making why, so many sales. Why is it not in a positive? Like, why are we losing money still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause I remember like at the time you would do all of, all of our marketing and about like, I do all the finances even to this day. Right. And that's like, Vlad's like, dude, we just made 50 K. I'm like, Vlad, I don't even want to hear about that. <laughs> I want to show you like, look yeah. at can we show you and something? Then, and then his face will drop. You're like, oh, fuck, what, what are we doing? I'm like, dude. So it wasn't until the point where we got really clear on numbers, like variable costs, you know, like good sold packaging 3pl shipping and then factoring in your fixed costs and then doing a daily takings spreadsheet right like every single day facebook there's our facebook ad spend is how many units we sold this 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 and at the end it spits out a number profitable not profitable mm -hmm. right and then over the whole month we can see a, a massive breakdown of what that looks like yeah so important to do things like that man so so important now another strategy that you guys have done um, that I've seen, it seems like it's worked quite well, but talk me through the, the idea and, and how effective it's been and how it's actually on the back end increases sales, like through your free education products, like your free eBooks and things like that. Talk to me about that strategy and how giving your customers or before people even purchased an eBook or an information on gut health, how that actually impacted sales for you guys. Yeah, it was actually quite a massive breakthrough for us because it was, it, it was almost like, like, what can we give our consumer for free? for them to understand us a bit better before asking for their, before asking them to purchase our product, right? How can we increase our value proposition for them to buy into us as a brand, right? So I think that for us really helped us scale. Well, the law of uh, reciprocity as well. Like mm. if you can give someone, and like once you've made it, it doesn't really cost you yeah. anything, but fuck, it's powerful, man. 100%. Fuck, and it's just, powerful. Just giving people as much value value for their dollar as exactly. they possibly can. If you can was... value load up front, then it'll yeah. come back to you. Exactly. Like, particularly if you have a good product now, yeah, in terms of like the next level of, of, of scale, I suppose, like before we get onto all the retail stuff, like where do you guys sit now? Where, where are you focusing on where, in terms of the online space, where's your focusing on what channels, what's bringing in the revenue for, for Pure you these days? We're still doing the, you know, the same old Facebook, you know, Instagram, same old, um, but we are, we're pushing to, to heavily into retail, hopefully this year, next year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the talks with some, with some big retailers, I can't reveal anything yet, but yeah, hopefully something big will come soon. And yeah, we've just got a huge product range that, we're, that we've been talking about that we're going to release really soon. And that's already in the works. And um, yeah, it's actually really exciting. And I think we finally have got this this structure where we see the business going, you know, yep. you know like uh, really big in the, in, in the near future. So yeah, it's good. 
Because you guys, you've already, you're already in a big retailer, right? We're in, we're in Woolies in Sydney. Yep. Yep. And, um, and we're in a Mr. Vitamins as the well. The best aid in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And just like skin clinics and stuff like that at the moment. Um, and yeah, hopefully some other bigger ones coming up, coming up soon. But yeah, we were just waiting to release some more, some more products. And um, yeah, and then they want multiple, a, like a bigger product range. A correct, lot of them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them do. It's that's why it's hard for us. Like we've had a lot of success um, in the US because our products like revolutionary. They're they're so far behind. Yeah. Um, but like Australia, they all want big product lines of consumables. Correct. So that's I think we'll get in because like we're kind of the brand to 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 get in in terms of Australia. But it's fucking even for us, the first ones, it's hard to get hard to crack retail. So hard. Hard to crack retail. It takes like to get into Ulta. We're working on that from like first meeting to launch was almost 18 months. Yeah. Well, every time I speak to a retailer, they don't give a fuck really about what our product is. They're just going to be like, what customer are you going to bring into our store? Mm. And when they come, what are they going to buy? Yeah. And that's all they really care about. And once you can kind of nail that with them in terms of like, okay, we can bring this customer in. And when this customer comes in, they buy our product. And then they're also going to buy this product. So when they yeah. leave, they're spending 150 bucks you know, of buying other products similar to them and then they, they leave the store. That's really what the retailers care about. And, you know, obviously shelf space and, you know, where you're, where they place your products and all that. So. I also think it makes a little bit of sense too. Like for us, it's been really hard to get into retail because we have, we do only have, well, not, I wouldn't say only, but we have one product, right? So on the shelf, it's not, you know, they look for a range. So on the shelf, it's harder to notice one product versus a massive shelf or yeah. a massive range. And that's what we're working towards now. So new product development, distribution through um, Australia nationally and through Southeast Asia with a couple of distributors that we're actually currently working with and going hard on Facebook ads. But another massive aspect that we're working on right now is building community, showing up on TikTok, showing up on Instagram and just showing up and providing as much value as we can so we can really connect to that audience, right? Um, and speak to their pain points and just explain like why we're different. Like if you don't want to buy from us, that's cool. But like, hey, here's something you never knew before. You know? I like that. Now, Vlad kind of answered the question, um, but if there's anything else to expand on or more specific things, like one of the questions I wanted to ask is like, from your opinion, because I know you're having a lot of conversations with retailers around the world, what what sort of things like are good to put in a retail deck? Like what sort of things do they want to see to like make them, because you can show them all the benefits of your product, all this shit. But like you said, they only care about what's going to make them money. Like this, they get these decks every day. Like what do you think are the main like core cool couple of things that maybe someone wouldn't think of like that really get their, these big retailers, these yeah. buyers attention. So a retailer doesn't really care too much about how much profit you're making. Yeah. Um, they care more about your market share, how much you own of them uh, of the market. And just really, where would you, where does your product sit in their store? How 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 is it different to what's already out there? And like I said, with in terms of customer, what kind of customer are you going to bring through the door? And I think they're the main things that they really they really look for. Um, yeah, really smart. Yeah. Now, go on. I was I was also going to just say I was going to add in that I think product innovation is a massive thing too, right? We pitched to a, a a distributor, a pretty large distributor in Australia, and said to them, "Hey, is our product?" What do you think? And she said, look, I'll get back to you tomorrow. And then called her. She said, I've got two minutes, but we get pitched 500 gut health products a month. I want you to tell me right now why are you different? I got two minutes. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, what am yeah, I going to do? Pitched it, nailed it. And now they want to work with us. But no, I think it came down to the actual innovation that we have because it's like quite a niche product, right? Yeah. Mm. Like a new Thing. And I, I think like so. Pure U as well as a brand, we're very, we're very niche and very big on education. Like you see Pure U, you don't think just, okay, this is just a gut health brand. It's overall a holistic brand. So I think we try and push that angle when we go into retail stores, which they really like. And are your customers more like Gen Z or millennials? Like the younger crowd or? We, we target two core demographics. So we target mums with adult acne and we target teenage teenagers, male or female, but predominantly about 75% of our, of our customer base is females. And then the, the gut health, like, is it a product, like a reset, sorry, the program, how does the product actually work? Because like gut health is kind of misunderstood, you know, by a lot of people that don't really understand how important the, the gut is and how it can affect not only skin, mood, mental health, that sort of stuff. It's such a loosely used word. Like I've, I've now seen like gut health on like a pack of corn kernels and I'm like, <laughs> like, do you know how heavily, coming do you know how heavily yeah. GMO corn, corn is? It's yeah. like, that is so bad for your gut. But no, anyway, um. So essentially it's a 20 day program that ultimately resets your gut microbiome, right? And we, because there's so many aspects to the gut, we focus on acne because it's the biggest pain and it's a massive market. 
So um, that's what the product does. And it's a 20 day commitment. Yeah. Now I want to move on to start talking about some, like some of the challenges about business and some, some mindset things as well. But before we move on, while we're talking like about the business side of things, like there's something I really wanted to speak about to you guys. Cause no Reva, you're, you're really important. Um, really passionate about this when it comes to testing um, for your business, how important is that? And like conversion rate optimization, what's some of the things that people can do to, you know, uh, adjust their website, improve their website to drive conversions. Because if you're just starting out and you have a conversion rate of three versus a conversion rate of 0.8, that can be the difference between you making it and you're not making it. 100%. I love talking about websites. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. So yeah. what's, uh, what's some of the low hanging fruit or what's some of the things that people should be focusing on to have a high converting website? So the first thing you should focus on is the, so the most important part of real estate on your website is the announcement bar down to the main banner on your website, the, f- the thing that customers or your traffic sees first, because you've got an average 1.9 seconds before they click off that website. So what you want to do is address their two mass, their, their two major objections twice. And we do that in the announcement bar and then some subtext plus with some social proof and a massive call to action in the middle of the screen. They can't miss it. So for us, what we realized in our core, core customer was that because we have a new innovation where because we have a new innovation, um, they were reluctant to try our product. They had never seen a product that claims to help fix your acne. They were used to seeing skincare. So they're like, oh, I don't know if this can actually work. I've never heard of this. So it's like, okay, well, we offer a 60 day money back guarantee. If, we, if you don't see results in 20 days, you get your money back. So it's like, oh, objection done. Oh, okay, cool. Next thing is we have our social proof, which is how many people we've, you know, we've helped us over like five, we, we have over 40,000 customers, but who left reviews like 5,000 reviews. So the social proof is there smack bang in their face mm. and an option to buy. And that's what we do. And then scroll down a bit to your authority in the market, which is like your media or the media logos. And for us that like we did that and our conversion, I went from point what was a 1.3 to for the past month on average, spent about 4.8, five, yeah. five, five and a half percent. It's, it's, it's nuts. massive driver, right? Nuts. And what are some of the biggest mistakes? Because I know you look at what you 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 help people improve the conversion rate on their websites. What's some of the biggest mistakes or common mistakes you see people making with their website? The most common mistake, I would say, ninety five percent of brands make is they focus on selling their product. And what I mean by that is the benefits and the features, but not actually the outcome of what their product does. And emotionally connecting their audience with that and addressing their pain points because mm-hmm. people don't people don't buy products. They buy solutions. Like, like our core customer, they don't want their money back. They don't, they just want to get rid of their acne, but we say that we get rid of their, their money back so that, that, you know, they feel safe and that they can understand like, like, like we put our money where, where our mouth is, right. We know our product is good. Mm. Right. Now change it up a little bit and talk, talk about a few different things before we start wrapping up, but we've spoken about mindset and stuff, but one thing I really want to ask you guys, I don't know if you're into it, but has visualization or the law of attraction played a part for, for either of you guys? Yeah, definitely. For me, it's like, it's, I live my life by it. Yeah, same. It's something huge. I, I um, listened to a lot of uh, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's mm-hmm. podcasts. Um, in 2018, I traveled to Canada um, to go see Bob Proctor. He was my first ever. Wow, he's the OG. He's, he's the, OG. He, unfortunately, he passed away. I think it was last year or the year before. And um, when I f- visited him, that was the first time I really got heavily into like the law of attraction and and manifesting and man, I, I've lived my whole life by it. Um, and I, and I believe that any entrepreneur, I think that needs to, needs to learn either to study it or, 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 or get behind it. Cause it's, it's truly amazing. And the power of the results is undeniable once you've done it. Yeah. Like me and George, when we were building the business, it was like nine months from kind of starting working on it to launch. And this is like three, four days a week. We'd go across to the park across the road from his house and we just sit on the park bench and talk about all these things that were going to happen. But when we do this, when, when we have this moment, um, we'll get our first sale. We, we sell out our first hundred, we get our warehouse, uh, we hire our first staff. And it's like those goals that we set um, and those moments we spoke about, we, we spoke about so clearly, but we, we, we felt those moments while we we're talking about it. So we connected like the emotion of it and like how powerful this is. It's like, we expected all those things to take like two years. Yeah. Like we ticked, we hit all our goals in like six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the first time I'd ever, cause I, um, it's, it's not even, it's probably one of the, the, the more basic books, but like I read the secret. So I just watched this course, secret yeah. on Netflix. So like, it's not my fact, but like just the introduction of it, I'm like, fuck it. I realized I was a big daydream my whole life about my goals and the things I used to daydream about or visualize used to come true. And so many things would go my way. So I linked that and saw this and I'm like, okay. 
let me try and doing this for the first time instead of subconsciously just, you know, daydreaming like, like every kid does, but really doing it um, consciously and, yeah. and, and in a targeted way. And it's changed my life. It's the, it's the number one thing that changed my life, visualization. Yeah, I agree. I think with, with me as well, I was such a big daydreamer as well, but the things with daydreaming that I found is it led to procrastination. Mm -hmm. So I constantly had to kind of write down or try and action small things, whether it would be like, you know, obviously starting the business. Okay, well, let me actually, like, like let's actually start it. Let's take the first step and then kind of manifest things on, on onto the top of that. But yeah, I found that if I kept just daydreaming all the time, it might lead to, to procrastination and obviously nothing ends up happening. For, for me, visualization is the number one thing I can do to generate internal motivation if I'm feeling a little bit flat because yeah, yeah. I'm just always so connected to my goals and like to my why. So it's like, how am I not going to be G'd up to put the work in? Whether it's going great, then it's obviously easy to be yeah. like, this is amazing. It's all working. But when it's not working, it's like, no, I'm, well, why am I doing this? Like, because sometimes like you go through ups and downs. You don't always feel like spending 12 hours a day on a fucking laptop yeah. staring at a screen. You know what I mean? So like, it's been a massive way for me to generate internal motivation. Um, but what I was speaking to the guys about before, and I like to get people's opinion, like, do you feel like you rely on generating motivation as, as, as um, like a trigger for you taking action? Or do you like to be someone that's just like more stoic? I'm going to fall back on discipline and like, whether I feel like it or not, I'm going to do it. I think I'm a bit of both. Mm. I think recently um, over the years, as I've becoming like older, more wiser, let's say I started to really study stoicism and, and what it means to be stoic. Um, but in terms of motivation, I think it's, it's one of those things where if you set up a goal, I think it's always important that the motivation comes to hitting those goals, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. In terms of, yeah, I think that's, I think for me, I, I definitely agree, but also it also comes down to, you know, you got to put the work in like manifestation, visualization, visualization is, is, is amazing. It's great, but that can't all be it. Oh, for sure. You, you know, a lot of people get misconstrued. Oh, let me just manifest a Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next week I'm going to wake up and I'm going to Lambo. Yeah. It's not like that. You, you actually have to put the work in. You actually have to do the work oh, for, for all sure. that to happen. And like you said, you had a goal of two years, but you worked hard as fuck to make that happen. And that's why it happened quicker because you put the work in, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like my life changed in like completely changed in like, I, did, I hadn't even really thought about starting business until like maybe six months before we actually started. Yeah. Um, so like, and then within, so like within two years, night and day life and like a year, like when was it? A year, a year, another example that's really fucking crazy for me. Like when I first got into personal development and the person that kind of got me into business was Gary Vee. Yeah. Like I listened to so much of his podcast, so, so much of his content within like just over a year of launching the business, I was fucking hanging out with him in his office. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. How, did, how did you manage that? Um, manifestation. Ma manifest. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just sat on my bed, closed my eyes, bro, and just thought about it. Didn't even work. And he's just, like, come to New York. He just yeah, just. It's actually a funny story, but it's like this is the way. I'll tell the story because this is the way the world works. When like you, you have conviction in, in in what you want, and like so like the the thought, the, the visualization, but then you actually fucking put the work in to match it, and you put your energy into that. It's like um, you know, like those business events, success resources, yeah. put them on. I was going to them once and we had VIP tickets. This was like the year right, right when we launched the business. I was already a couple months in, did the whole thing, fucking VIP tickets, take a photo with Gary. You know, I was like, oh yeah, sweet. That's sick. And then they called, called me and then their sales lists. They're like, oh, you did the VIP thing. Do you want to, do you want to do a dinner with Gary in like three days for like five grand? I'm like, oh, nah, you know, whatever. And then I remember doing that. Cause like the business is so new, like we'd made a bit of money, but I'm like, I don't want to just fucking waste five grand on a dinner. Like I don't yeah. really, I don't really give it like, I don't really care. Um, but then I remember thinking like, fuck, like this is a couple months down the line. I, I regretted not doing it. Cause like how often do you get to have dinner with like someone that's inspired you Great. to like change your life? Gary V in my eyes, one of the best modern uh, entrepreneurs in the world, because like he's made money in like kind of the way that all of us, like yeah. in our world, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, he thinks like us. He thinks uh, like yeah, us. He's a millennial yeah. in a way. Yeah. The, yeah. He's like the, the lost whatever, millennial. Yeah. millennial yeah. Yeah. Um, so then this was probably like a year after, must've been close to a year after that. I just randomly sent the guy who I had one of their emails, sent him, sent him an email just out of nowhere. I don't know what sparked the thought to do this. Uh, just say, Hey, like, um, are you guys bringing Gary V out to do a dinner again this year? I, I, I'm, I'm keen to do it. And they go, no, nah, we're not, but he's doing this thing. It's not really like direct. It's not like a normal, he comes out, does those tours. He's doing this thing. And for anyone who doesn't know Gary, he doesn't do small group like mentoring or consulting. He only does big stages because Gary V it's yeah, not really worth guy. his time. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? He's like, but he wants to do it 
you know, and see if he enjoys it. It's like a test for him. And he's doing it in Australia because, you know, a lot of big brands test, like big brands, not just personal brands, but massive companies. Facebook Meta, they, they do all their testing in markets like Australia for whatever reason, I feel like it's good. Um, it's like, so do you want to apply to be, it's like going to be like max 20 people. You're going to get to spend three days with Gary in Sydney, three days in London, four days in New York. Do you want to apply for that? I was like, fucking oath I yeah. do. So I put the application in, sent it. First success resource, had to check it. Sweet, got approved. Then Gary's team had to check it. Once they checked, I had to do a phone call with him. So this is another moment that blows my mind um, in terms of like how powerful like law of attraction is. And I grew up in the suburbs in Southwest Sydney. I was like lower middle class. Like my, my parents, like in my, my, my mom immigrated from Ireland, like very working class, like not, didn't have a lot of money growing up. And then I, I get a call and it's a New York number. I answer it. He goes, yo, what, yo, what up Dylan? It's Gary V. And I'm just like, time stood still. Yeah. It's like, bro, Gary V's fucking calling my phone. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. That's my number. Yeah. Like I didn't have, a, I didn't have a business like 14 months ago and I'm getting a phone call for Gary V. Fucking it just nuts. fucking blows your mind. Like the potential when you, when you believe, and that's the thing, like self-belief is really important. Let's get onto that next. But like the power of when you fucking believe and you just have a crack mm-hmm. and you go for it, have a like 10 minute conversation with Gary. And like, he found out my age. I was so much younger than everyone else. And it was e-com. He's like, fucking no, like come do it. Um, so that was sick. And then like another, we, we did the few days in Sydney and London, which were incredible. I also, not only was it a cool experience, but I learned so much. Imagine like getting 10 days or eight, whatever it was with Gary, you learn so much and you know what he's like, like 20% of it was structured. And then the rest, you just fucking asking questions, yeah, jamming. So it was fucking the best. But then I had the moment where in his office, this was on the last night in his offices in, in, in New York, like fucking whatever level up in the sky. Uh, and we were drinking wine. It was recently after he, he launched empathy. And we were talking and then this is the second time like time stood still for me. And it made me realize the power of visualization, the power of like when you want something, go after it. Everything just went quiet. Like I was like, Gary was like probably in between where you guys are, I'm standing here and like, he's talking to someone and everyone's listening and everything just like blurs out. Like everything yeah, goes wow. quiet and like time stands still. And I just look out at like Manhattan, like the New York city skyline, my first time in New York I'd watched it in so many movies as a kid dreaming of going to New York one day. You know what I mean? And I realized in the space of two years, I've gone from not having a business, not having an idea about having a business to now standing a meter away from Gary V drinking wine in his fucking office that I've seen in his podcast, in his content hundreds of times. Like anything's possible. Legit, man. Yeah. Like anything's possible. Dude, I was a kid awesome, from Western yeah. Sydney. Like I didn't have a lot of like, my, like nothing. There's no excuses. And that's from that moment on, I've never limited any goal I've ever set for myself. It's just how bad do I want it? Always, yeah. You know? 100%, man. It's crazy. More, yeah. The gratitude's like flowing out of you, bro. Yeah, but it's like, bro, it's like, <laughs> it's like, how, how can you give that? Like at that moment was like, my life's changed forever when I get that. And I can try and tell people and like, I'll tell that story and some people get it. But it's like, until you've like manifested something yourself, like created yeah. something you've really wanted. It's like, I did something so big, so quick. It's like, fuck, yeah. I can do whatever I want. That's what I try and like get out of people when they want to start a business, chase their passion, even to be a content creator around their favorite passion, whether it be some sport, fucking Lego, dancing, yeah, rap, exactly. whatever it is, fucking chase your dreams. Yeah. There's no, there's no reason Except not to. Goals, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, look at you guys, like yeah. how much, obviously you guys always thought about getting into business, but it's like from that moment that, of like the first, you have 5,000 units, don't know how to sell it from a relative, not low, but like a, a very big challenge, like a few years in the future things going so much differently for you. Like, what does that, how do you guys reflect on, you know, what you've been able to build in a few years and how do you look at the future now? The goals you set, I'm sure are massive compared yeah. to maybe, you know. We actually spoke about this yesterday and we say that there's so many times where we just need to sit back and be grateful for what we've achieved. And I think that's so common for entrepreneurs as well is we're so quick to bite on what's not going right. Mm. And we don't sit back and realize like, fuck, we've actually come a long way. And I think it's only yeah recently that we've started to actually be like, okay, man, like, We've been through the fucking hell and we've made it and here we are, we're still going. But every level is a new devil. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And that's the thing. It's difficult. Um, I've reflected more now, as I said, like to, because I'm working with a lot more people that are just starting businesses, it makes me reflect and telling them my story for that yeah. inspiration makes me reflect. But until really focusing on that the last six months, I hadn't really reflected for a couple of years. Yeah. And it makes you realize, holy shit, like you ungrateful little bitch. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're always stressing about what's not going right or what you need to do next. But like, look where you are. And like exactly gratitude right. gets thrown around a lot. And in the day to day, in the small moments, I've got a lot of work to do about being 
grateful because like I'm always going, go, I always want more, which yeah, a lot of us do. We're, just, we're the exact same. You know what I mean? And I think it's normal for a lot of high achievers. We always want more, mm-hmm. more, more, more. I think also because we know, like we know the potential. So it's almost like, meh, we can yeah. do better. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it is important to definitely come down to like, like, you know, ground yourself and just step back and go, fuck, like we've actually created this. Like I was saying to Vlad, like, dude, like we launched this brand. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, no, 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 dude. Like <laughs> we've literally created a brand new inno- innovation. Like we've brought something brand new, this world, this entire planet has never seen. Like, do you know what that means? And he's like, yeah, fuck we have. <laughs> Bro, like yeah. walk down, like come down to Sydney, see it on the shelf and like you, it'll fucking be again like crazy. Like you've 100%. built something. Like you said, you've created it. It's such a fulfilling thing, not even about the money you can make from being in business, but just creating something like that. And like you're genuinely impacting the world. And it's like, even- <laughs> A lot of people like, look, it's all bullshit. And like, not, not all, but like a lot of people be like, okay, why'd you start your business? Oh man, I was really passionate about X, Y, Z. But like for us, like truthfully, was I passionate about laser hair removal or did I see an opportunity? Right. Yeah. And, and, and we did and that's honest. And some people won't be like, oh no, you can't say that. But it's like truly the amount of messages we got and this one, it changed pretty quick for me. And a lot of our branding and our values changed around like, body positivity and like self-belief because that was a core to mine, not body positivity. I didn't struggle with that, but like self-belief and wanting to look and feel good about yourself. But the amount of people that we've like helped change their lives, because some people, whether they lived out in the country and there's, there's, there's no laser clinics there or they couldn't really afford, you know, lasers expensive yeah. going to uh, like to just create a product, even though it may seem like a superficial thing on the outside, like removing hair or fixing someone's acne, it genuinely does change people's lives. And like that changed me a lot back then hearing all these, it was mainly the mums, you know, all the people that were in their forties who hadn't looked after themselves for so many years, they weren't a priority to see that now they are. It's like made me realize about fuck, like business isn't just about making money. Yeah. I think at the start, it definitely is because like at the end of the day, people are in business to make money. Right. So there's that, but any person, any entrepreneur, any person doing a startup, the first thing you think is, oh, I'm going to make millions. I want to make millions. Yes, here's an opportunity. Yes, I, I want to get rich. But I think throughout the process, you actually, like for me personally, it's like you actually forget about all that. And it's more like, fuck, like I actually love the journey so much. Like this is actually so much more like rewarding and you get to help so many people. Like we've had, we've literally had people who have suffered with IBS so bad that said, guys, like I cannot live, like actually cannot live without this product. It's like, so like when we sit there and read, they were like, dude, like what if we didn't create this product? Like exactly. this, person this person wouldn't have struggling. felt like that. Yeah. yeah it's it gives me goosebumps thinking about yeah. it. But I think for us, me personally, it's more like the journey, right? For sure. And that's the trick. It's like, yeah, we got to be grateful for what, where we are and just grateful for the exciting path to run. It's the fucking amazingly privileged position to even have a business to try and grow. Even if it's just starting out, the fact that you, you, you're in the position or the headspace to, you know, get things together enough to put a business together to try and grow is fucking awesome. But it's like balancing that always wanting more. And like, I know how far I want to take it and how big we can push it. Exactly. Yeah. Doing it at the same time. It's, it's difficult. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the, we have, we have our days where it's good and we have our days where it's not, but like you said, like, particularly in, 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 in today's society where it's like really easy to like virtue signal and like everyone really wants to do that. Like people fake it, like people make up all this bullshit stuff. But it's like, like what you said, Reeve is so right at the start, man, the first six months, 12 months, it just fucking needs to be about making profit or you yeah. won't exist, you exist to yet. make an impact. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And like mm. so many people try and drag down or, or, or throw names at, uh, people that are, that have businesses, like they're all greedy, like they're all selfish, like blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. It's like the people that have built a platform for themselves and now have a bit of what, that's when you're in the power to really make change. Correct. I'll say a couple of things to that. Firstly, those people, those people that, that, that say those things wish they could do what you're doing. They wish they could leave their shitty nine to five living in the matrix bubble and do what you're doing. Right. And, 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 and the other part of that, I say is like, why can't you have both? Why can't you make a fuckload of money and help a fuckload of people at the same time? Amen, brother. So that's it. And like, but they can, it's like, it's that trigger, that insecurity in them mm, because yeah. they haven't done it, but they want to, mm. but just do it. Exactly. You know what I mean, just do it. You fucking genuinely can. And I'm not trying to be savage. I'm trying to be an asshole. Like mm. I'm saying no, like dude, girl, whatever you can do it. Mm. You know what I mean? In Australia, I know what's it like in South Africa, Australia has tall poppy syndrome where someone makes too much noise or tries to do something yeah. too different, makes people feel uncomfortable. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Is that different in the South African culture? Or is it more like, 
Well, how would you explain it? Well, I, I left when I was very young. Um, I left when I was 13. So, you know, like, what's that, like grade six? Mm. But no, I think South Africans have a very, like, strong work ethic because of how the country is, right? There's not much opportunity. And that's why we emigrated to Australia because there was no opportunity. Like, my parents knew, like, when I finished school, I'd leave the country because it's like, there's, there's literally an opportunity. So I think South Africans have that, like, do or die attitude. Yeah. Cause you have to scrap have for that, to. right? Yeah. To well, make it happen. Well, half the time you were like fending for your life there because mm. the, the crime's really bad. Well, I mean, it's not that bad, but like, you know, I think the, it just comes down to like that grit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and, and like Vlad too, like being Eastern European. And that's what I said before. Where's your family from? Serbian. Oh, bro. All, yeah. all my, Cause I grew up in the suburbs. All my mates are Maso or Serb. Yeah. yeah there like, you go. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sure if you speak to them, you'll know as well. Like, you know, we were, most recently, you know, had a war in the nineties. So a lot of people, you know, I was born in Germany. My parents escaped the war. And um, then from Germany, we moved here. And um, yeah, that's why, you know, I've got this, this mentality of like, I need to make shit happen. Yeah. Like, you know, I need to, I need to, I need to build something. And yeah, that's why because, we work so well because yeah. we, we, we have the exact same outlook on, on, on life like that. Like, dude, like we're not giving up. Like we have, if we have, if we run out of money, we'll raise money. That's okay. Mm. We'll make you it know? work. We'll make it work. And, and that's the thing as well. Like, yeah, those like shared values or experiences, obviously we didn't live through these wars ourselves, yeah. but like my family came from, from, from Northern Ireland because of the Irish civil war. Yeah. That was fucked up shit going yeah. on. Like, like my family w w w was Catholic and like they lived in a heavily Protestant area where it's like 90% Protestant. And oh, like, wow. there was fucking really violent crimes going on, like bombings, shootings, killing, like all the time. So it's like, people see me and it's so funny. I don't care about it all. Like you're such a, just a privileged white boy. Yeah. You know, and it's like, Whatever, you just go to a Celtic Rangers game. You'll see how fucking yeah, I know, it's fucking <laughs> cra crazy. Um, but I want to change the pace because, like this series, like down in Melbourne, it is a lot of like ecom brands. I kind of want to just get some ecomish questions, some feelers, some sure. advice, kind of stuff. And I'm going to ask everyone kind of some similar questions at the end. Um, but we'll get through as many as we can. And we'll start to wrap this up. One thing, it's a really obvious one, but it's really important for the journey. And there's always a massive lesson in it. And you probably both, and I, I expect you'll both have different answers, but you're whatever, three years into the journey now, maybe a little bit more. Well, fuck, it's 2023. Holy shit. What's, what's one thing that, you, that you've learned along the way that you know now that you wish you knew at the start? I think for me, there's a few things for me. I think it's, it's okay not to, not to be right, like not to, not to know the answer for questions, but also to, to fail quickly. And when you fail quickly, just pick yourself back up and be like, okay, we've learned from this. We know that doesn't work. Now we just keep pushing forward and we try and find the answer. We try and find the, the, the resolution. Nice. I'll say the same, you know, it, it's okay to fail and, you know, don't be afraid of what people think of you because, you know, the most successful people in the world have failed multiple times. And like Vlad said, the quicker you fail, the quicker you learn. Like we've done probably 3% of shit right. I would say like we've, we've learned more from what we've fucked up on and what has gone right. Yeah. yeah. And I don't and think people you always that. do though. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. And I think, uh, another thing as well is for any e-com brand starting out is stop comparing yourself to other brands. Cause comparison is the biggest killer to all motivation. Mm. There's a thief and, of joy. Mm, like, like that yeah. saying, it's so true. Though. Yeah. And like, just stop comparing yourself. And I think that was something that we did early on, which is what killed us a lot for motivation is we just kept comparing ourselves. Like, Oh, but this brand did this much in its first year. Why are we not there? What are we doing wrong? And it's just like, well, fuck, we got to stop doing that because it's just going to kill us. It's going to kill us mentally and it's going to kill our business. Yeah, it's like, but I smiled at $100 yeah, million. Exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Why are we not doing it? Yeah, fuck. Imagine launching back, like, what, I don't know when they were, but imagine. The golden era. I know, yeah. the gold, oh. like, I wasn't really the golden era. I was like. Coming out of it a bit. Coming, like, like the silver era. Yeah, yeah. the silver era. It's like, <laughs> did imagine launching like an income business in like 2011, 2012 oh. and just having like the $4 CPMs on right, Facebook. Right. Like, Oh man. We say that all the time. Like imagine yeah. we were just like even three, three years earlier. We'd be yeah, like, I know. Yeah. And like pre all that Cambridge Analytica stuff, yeah. with all like the privacy and data tracking and yeah. stuff. Oh, these, they, we, we met those kids back then, man, they were lucky. Um, yeah. Now uh, in terms of traits of a successful founder, what do you think is the most important trait that an entrepreneur needs to be successful? I think definitely um, leadership is a, is, is, is a big one. And I think showing up every day. Even when you when you don't want to and you can't, fucking have to show up, show up for your team, show up for everyone. I think it's yeah. I'll, I would put it down to like extreme ownership, like owning your shit, right? Like giving yourself compassion that okay, well, like I'm doing something you've never done before, so I, I don't actually have to know it all, and that's okay. Mm. You're a Jocko right. Willing fan? Yeah, I'm him. actually reading his book currently. Oh yeah, nice. I love him. He's so good. Yeah, I got this. Um, 
it's not really a book you read just like cover to cover, but discipline equals freedom. Yeah. Try and read a couple of pages of that every day. It's just like, oh yeah, sometime like I'm more of like, I lead into encouragement in terms of like to, to get people up and stuff. But sometimes bro, you need to fucking call you, look in the mirror and say, I'm being soft or I'm being a whatever. Yeah. Like, like, cause at the end of the day, if you don't do it, you're, you're hurting you. 100%. If you don't do it, you're only hurting yourself. Like for everyone that hasn't started their business or has an idea and it's half done, like by not doing it, that's fine. You can choose to watch Netflix if you want, but you're only hurting yourself. Exactly. You know what I mean? I also think it comes down to as well, like for you to do those things and, and start your business, it's, you have to then show up. You have to be a CEO. You got to make tough calls. You have to have hard conversations. You have to hire people. You have to fire people. You have to pay yourself. You have to make enough sales. So I think the whole showing up aspect is a massive reason why people avoid and procrastinate because fuck, like I've got to be this new version of myself. I've never been to before. And it's scary as fuck. And it's like you mentioned as well, when you, when you have to start paying people like, and then like things like COVID happen and like, obviously there's, there's the COVID econ boom where like everyone like had like a black Friday that lasted for like three months, which was sick. But then it gets to the point, okay, now you can't get stock and if you don't have stock. Well, you can't really make a lot of revenue and you have to start making hard decisions. It's like, it's like there's a lot of fucking responsibility that comes with running a business, leading a business, like you said. And it's like, you got to grow up real quick. hundred well, yeah. percent. We were plagued with stock issues oh, for like six months. I, there, there was a period for six months where we had no stock. I know. We went on channel seven and I remember <laughs> we did like record numbers, like 150 K in like two days or something. And we had no stock to sell. Oh yeah. We had no stock because it could, but like it, it was getting manufactured, yeah. but, um, there was COVID delays in, the, in our supply chain. So we had to like go on a, a pre-sale and say, so it was so sorry. Like, you know, it's been pushed back three weeks, but everybody understood like, because they, they knew they were purchasing on, 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 on a pre-sale. Sale, yeah. at least. But wow. Like I, I would say we've probably had stock versus non had stock for like 50, 50 throughout our whole journey. Like there's been probably, I would say a year and a half of us not having stock. That's crazy. Yeah. That's like it's you fucked. said, it's good in the way that like, oh, yeah, come be competitive to us. Yeah, exactly. That's what we say. Yeah, yeah, trust me. It's not and even we were speaking about it before, like if we could start again and do pure you again, would we do it? And we're like, probably not. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why is, man, the bullshit that we've gone through and like just constantly just having to prove to everyone and to prove to ourselves and just all the bullshit that we've like literally gone to to get to where we are, we're like, no, we couldn't fucking do it again. I probably wouldn't start off yeah. with such a hard product. Yeah, just once. You know, one. yeah. That's the beauty of the naivety, you know? Yeah, exactly. You don't know. Yeah. What's, what's, what's like you guys laugh and look at each other and laugh and you talk about it, but like what's that one or what's one big bullshit thing that you had to overcome? Fuck. Um, what's one bullshit thing we had to overcome? So because we had no idea in business and we just chucked all our money at this product, we had, we had about $380,000 worth of stock that was expiring in three months and we had to sell all of it. And we did it. We did it. How did you sell that stock so quick? We just went on a half price sale yeah, yeah, and yeah. scaled our Facebook ads with a really good um, offer for our top of funnel mm-hmm. and went ham. Obviously, you know, I don't agree with discounting your yeah. brand like that, but we, we literally were I like, had to, to do it. We were like, holy shit, dude, like we have expiring stock and we need to sell it. <laughs> that would have really killed you. Yeah. If you's- and then after that, that's when we, it was a win, like a long winter. That's when we had no stock as well. Like shit, like, yeah. cause we, we had to, because we had, we had no money or low cash, low cash flow, the money we got from all of that, we pumped into new stock, but the lead time so, was a minimum four months plus two more months delay with shipping through, um, you know. And then we obviously so. did a capital raise in that time. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's a whole nother ball game. And then that's we went to media story. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned you did you channel seven, 150 K in like two days. Like what's been your most, are uh, your best performing um, promotion, sale marketing initiative? And like, what were the results over like your best day week, whatever, what was the thing that, was that fucking epic result for you? What was it? Yeah, I think Channel 7 was probably our biggest one. What was it, like a news coverage? Yeah, it was, was, it was national news at 6 p.m. It went across the whole of Australia. I had to take my shirt off on that, on, on, on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Reva's, Reva's back was all over, yeah. all over oh. national TV. But I think, yeah, it was – I think with that came so much – with every high, there's always a low. Yeah. And with us, like, we can openly say it here, but, like, yeah, we, we obviously did the 150K in two days, but – um. That article then went on to um, onto Media Watch on ABC, mm. and Media Watch did this whole segment trying to call out, you know, the bullshit that that was posted, and it was it was extremely disheartening because obviously we had customers wanting refunds now, and not and that many wanted refunds. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't crazy, but you know, I had people like that were watching Media Watch sending like death threats to my mom, 
Like, why, what did they try and claim? Like, like they're claiming, well, you guys are bullshit. Your product's bullshit. You went onto Channel 7 just to claim, you know. And obviously what we pitched, what we what people need to understand as well, what we pitched to Channel 7, we can only say within the TGA guidelines. So we're not, we're not, we're not pitching anything to them that's out of the ordinary. We're just going off of what we're allowed to say. And what Channel 7 posted is what they posted. They just made it into a crazy new segment saying that these two entrepreneurs have a cure for acne. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they really, yeah. but like they completely yeah. fucked us in, in that aspect. And, 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 and we had the proof, yeah. like we, you know, we had, we, we had the proof at the time that like we didn't say that, Yeah. but um, yeah, that was a crazy process, but look, it's, it's okay. Like, yeah. you know, we learned from all it. PR yeah. is good PR. Right? Yeah. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, no, but there, yes. no, um, but like, it's so, it's so cool as well. Like at the start we had a daily mail article and um, like everyone has daily mail articles and we've had tons since it's like we had one and it was the main story on their landing page for like 12 hours i don't know how it happened why it got like the main big story on their website this was pretty early on and we did just from daily mail direct tracking like forty thousand dollars yeah in sales from daily mail too yeah but it's like okay that was sick and then what i realized and this is where my cousin's like you got to stop doing these interviews and stuff every time we do an interview like that they're Three months later, six months later, there's 30 new competitors. You know what yeah. I mean? So there's always a pro and yeah, con for everything yeah. you do. And it's like, yeah, some things, yeah. Yeah. But Daily, Daily Mail was, a, was the biggest breakthrough for us as well. I remember it was, that was the first month where we, where we hit our, our first um, six figures. Yeah. I remember we, we were at my brother's boxing studio and um, because he had, he had boxing every week. And on the Monday, a, a journo called us, and interviewed me and Vlad in the car while we we're just chatting. Because at, at the time, like we, we, we were doing like $8,000 months. Mm. Like, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And talking about this of boxing, seven days, uh, on, the, on the Friday. And I'm looking at Vlad. I'm like, dude, like my phone's going off. Like what the fuck? And we, we opened my phone because it was glitching so much. Open our phone, refresh. It was like 17K. And we were like, look at each other like, what the what fuck? just happened? Yeah. And then we refresh it again, 30K. Refresh it again, 40K, 60K. And we're like, bro. And what? the crazy thing about oh, that God. is because um, Daily Mail was so big, that News Corp went live with the story at the exact, exact same, time. same time. So we had both of them going live at the fuck. same time. And it was on the front page, yeah. same, same as you for like 12 hours. Yeah. So Dude. it was absolutely nuts. I remember I had one of my primary school teachers message me on WhatsApp. No idea. Primary how, school teacher. Yeah, no, no idea how they got my how they got my number, but they're just like, I'm so proud of you. I saw you all. <laughs> I'm like, how what did you even get fuck? my number? Yeah. And that and that was the biggest breakthrough for us because that was where everything everything flipped for us because now we had cash. You have the cash to then yeah. go and execute and all the learnings and all the fuck ups that you made over the last And it was months. like, we fucking deserve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you need your luck yeah. to go your way at times mm. in business. Like when you're in that like you're not quite a brand new startup, but like you clearly have got, like you need yeah. to get something behind you. Do you remember what for revenue you did that day? Like, was that like? Yeah, uh, we did. It was, it was about 140 K in 24 hours, but <sighs> over the span of like three, yeah, three yeah, days, yeah. it was like just over like 200 K. <sighs> what are you, what's going through your head then? Cause I remember those days, man, we're high five and we're jumping it. Like, it's crazy. Cause you, you're like, literally this is like game changing money for you. Yeah. What, what, what's, Fly on the wall. What he's. What I he's remember. Doing. Yeah, we got home from boxing, and I remember like we didn't sleep. Yeah, we didn't he was living with me at the time. Yeah, because on one end we were like, "This is so great," but like, "Fuck, now we got to pack so many orders." Because <laughs> yeah. we're still all doing it from his house at yeah, the time, and yeah. obviously, um, and yeah, I remember like it was like midnight at the time, and I'm just like, "Damn, dude, I'm going for a walk." I yeah. just went for a walk, and just I was I remember I was speaking to my best mate at the time. I'm like, "Dude, this is fucking crazy. Like, I can't believe this is happening." Yeah, and um, yeah, we, I was just trying to take it all in, and really, just like be like, "Fuck." It's actually happening. And like you said, like I manifested it like madly, like that first daily mail article, like I manifested that like when, before we even started our business, like it was the one thing I'm like, I'd love to have a daily mail article on us. And, and, and those moments, those days make it all worth it. hundred percent. You know always. what I mean? All the hard work and like the, the long days, the, the problems you've got to overcome, those moments are why you fucking put in the work while it's hard. Always. A why when you've got five thousand units of stock and, you know, a couple grand to try and sell it with. That's why you fucking make it happen. Those days make it so worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like, I'm, I like being real because the, you know, all those fake entrepreneurs, Oh, fucking do this, do this, you know, drop ship. You'll make 10 grand profit in a week. Like, yeah. first of all, when they say, I'm going to get you to 10 grand, you're probably making $20 profit. If you're lucky, but it's like those days when you're building something real fucking makes it all worth it because th there are sacrifices involved in business, obviously, but it can fucking absolutely change your life. So I'm a, such a big advocate in that. Now on, on that topic with like the drop shippers and stuff, obviously you guys have built a brand, you built a really cool brand, but what's your thoughts in, in 2023 in, in the drop shipping versus building a brand debate? 
I think we've always spoke about, I've never been an advocate for drop shipping. Personally, I hate it. Um, I just think if you're going to go out there and put the money in, it's always best to build a brand. It's going to, it's going to take you further. If you ever want to exit, it's easier to exit. Well, not easier, but it's but much, much better to, to exit that way. And I just think, yeah, drop shipping is more, you're, you're, if the product sold, sold really well, there's a brand that's selling it 10 times better. That's making 10 times more cash. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe when we're talking about those, like 2014, 20, Correct. State, yeah. you know what I mean? 2015. Sure. The people would have made bank doing those general stores with yeah. the most random products ever. But now consumers are smarter. Meta don't like drop shippers. And as a brand that's had to um, like withstand like death by a thousand cuts almost at one point, fucking thousands of drop shippers targeting exactly the same customers as us in Australia. Like at a point, like we're spending as much money as we are. And then there's a thousand other people spending as much. And Australia is a relatively small market. People will try and like, and they'll, this is the thing you got to deal with when you're in business. Like they'll go and like get a product that costs a third cost price yeah. of ours. And we could have, we, we know what they're doing. We know what they're using, but again, we're building a brand long-term exactly. and like, it's a hard enough product as it is having really good product because like there's, you know, things you got to do right. That takes a long time. Nervous. And they damage the whole fucking, the credibility of the whole space, 100%, yeah. the whole brand. So it's like, that's why I'm a fan as well, but it's just, it's getting way harder to do it with like iOS changes and attribution and Facebook coming down hard and wanting to get them kind of off the platform. Yeah. It's going to be difficult, but I think there's a place for it. Like if you're starting out just as a means to an end to make a bit of money, to make that product into a brand once you can do it. Yeah. I think understanding e-com, I think drop shipping is good. Mm -hmm. Um, understanding, you know, obviously how Facebook ads work, what it means to sell a product online, then for sure you can start Yeah, the with, fast learnings yeah, exactly. and stuff. But in terms of like making good profit and really understanding business, I think, yeah, you should mm. just definitely- I, I, I also that. say to people who, who, you know, about the whole job shipping thing, it's like, why do, why do girls go and buy like a $3,000 Prada bag when they can go to Kmart and buy like a $20 bag, mm. right? It's branding. Like branding is what people want to be a part of and then building community to support that. It's like if we try to react to the market and slash our prices by 50%, mm. we'd have been like all them and we wouldn't be here anymore. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like sometimes you just got to, you know, do what, like play the long game. You know what I mean? That's what branding is. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's crazy. Okay. Like, you know, it's, you know, we're still looking for a massive return, right? Mm. But we know that that's, that's going to come in, in, in the long term, you know, mm. when, like what Vlad was saying, like when you exit, right? Yeah. Because can your business, will your business still be around when you're not there? And that's the goal. Can you do that with a dropshipping business? Well, probably not. Yeah. You, you guys la like laugh like it's a whole other story. What's, what's the biggest lesson you guys learned from like the raising capital? Like good experience, difficult experience, learning experience? I think it's was like learning how to, how to sell your business to investors. That's one thing. Um, and I think just having proper structure within our business, I think that was one thing that we had to learn yeah. pretty quickly. And, and, um, yeah, I think they're, they're the two main things that I would say. But yeah, also just like, yeah, numbers. and I think it's a really good process if you want to, like, ex especially now because crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding is booming at the moment, especially in 2022. They, they, they've seen massive, they've hit all record highs. Um, but what it really comes down to is understanding the goal of your raise. Like, like, like why is someone going to invest? Emotionally detach from your brand and picture yourself as an investor. Okay, so like, why am I going to invest in this brand? Is there growth? Right? Will I? Can I see a return on my investment? And then you, as the you know the the founder, what is what is the um forecast of six months, twelve months? What does it look like? And actually action that, and be very clear on that. And I think for us, Vlad and I, we were clear, but looking back on it now, a few of those things we can't actually do just because of market changes. Like we actually can't do that. Like we would lose money if we did that. Mm. So. But it's like you said, we talk about people not knowing the numbers and having to go through the process. You would know your business so much more if you've ever tried to raise. You have Correct. to, right? Mm. Yeah. And you have to be able to speak about your business in ways you've never articulated in that way before. Of course. And obviously you've got investors that are trying to tell you that your your valuation of your business is way lower than what you than what it is. And then you know, obviously have to prove to them that it's not. And you know, we've been through everything. Like we spoke to hundreds of investors on the phone trying to tell us how they think that our valuation is too low. And it's just, you know, obviously just back yeah, and on, forth. On one end, it's like, yeah. it's like your valuation is too high and on one end it's too low. It's like, well, you know, yeah. but in life, you, yeah. you, you, like you can't please everybody. Yeah. But so. like just for whatever you guys do in business with Pure U or with anything else in the future, what a valuable learning experience, you know what I mean? To try and go through that. Cause if you want to try and do it again, how much more better prepared will you be? Yeah. Well, everything's all prepared. All the legal documents, everything's prepared. Like all, we, all you would have to do um, all we'd have to do now is, is make a new video with a new forecasted mm -hmm. plan and, and that's it. So go into market with a crowdfund now, 
be Easy. very, very, yeah. very it'd, it'd be quicker to market instead yeah. of that process which we could, took three, four months. And what we could do now is we could actually raise more money than we raised last time because we have an actual proper forecast of where we see the business going, the retail deals we plus have. Plus growth as well. Plus yeah. growth. So yeah, which is a plan that we have within the next year of, you know, if we do decide to go for another capital raise, it'll definitely be much better. Yeah, for sure. Now, last couple of questions when we wrap up, but it's, we've kind of been speaking about this a bit, but like for someone thinking about starting their business, like what's just one piece of advice you'd, you'd give someone that wants to start their first e-com business, never done e-com before? Oh, there's so many ways yeah. I can answer this question. I think the one thing I would say is get ready to work as hard as you fucking can, right? Get ready to shop every day. You know, get ready to feel extremely lonely. People won't understand you. It's a massive emotional roller coaster. Um, I would say, why are you why are you actually showing up? Like, what do you actually want out of this? And just show up every day, right? Don't give up what you're doing because always come back to why did I start? You know, like we have moments all the time, like fuck, bro. Like it'd be so much easier to go and get a job. Hundred percent, it would be, right? But why do we start? Why do we start this business? And that's what everything comes back to. Yeah, I, love I think it. yeah. For me as well, it's um. Um, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, You've made it an hour and a half. Yeah. You've done well. Yeah. You're almost there. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, well, uh, what I was going to say is, um, yeah, it's, it's just like a, what, what, sorry, what were you saying? You were saying? I just, it was, it's just more so like a never give up attitude. Like, cause, because like there's too much to lose right now, mm. right? Especially for us. I, I, I was just saying like people, when you start an e-com, like why are you, why are you starting this brand? Like what is the reason, right? And always be true to that and, and just show up. But it's like business isn't for everyone. It's not. Okay. It's so it's it's so much harder than you think it is. But it's like, like you said, what's the alternative? Do you want to live life in, you know, the nine to five, doing things that you don't really want to do because that's what you do? It's like you're gonna to have to take the risk and make yourself you're gonna feel uncomfortable, like the loneliness thing, like people won't understand the, what you gotta deal with, you know what I mean? I think, yeah, well, so I remember what I was gonna say now. I think um a lot of people also get this um this stigma around e com that it's like quick money. And I think what we've learned over, over the, the last years is it's definitely not. And if you have this shiny object syndrome, then e is definitely not for you because it's something that requires a lot of cash. Mm-hmm. It takes like, obviously it's cash in cash out kind of game. And it's one of those things where you have to build over years. Like you're not going to fucking drive a Lambo after eight months in e But the guys that say you can are yeah. fucking bullshitting you. Exactly right. And that's what I think people believe. And I think when, you know, when people read our daily mail articles, like, why are you guys not driving Lambos? <laughs> Why yeah. are you guys not fucking in ten million dollar houses? Like, yep. and I think people don't realize that it's it's not that kind of game, and it's but, not. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but like you you could pull out all the profit, but yeah. then you're not going to have a business next Correct. year. Correct. Yeah, we you know could take I mean? everything out and be like, hey, you know, good we're job. Happy now. Yeah, bought a Lambo. How? Yeah, yeah. 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 we're going to have a business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, like priority. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what's the big goal? And what is the big goal for you guys? Where where do you want to take it? How far? What's the goal with this? Yeah, I think over the next three you know, obviously three years now, we, we want to be in a lot of major retailers and we just want to build the brand. Like we want Pure Utes to be an overall like health well-being brand and just be a powerhouse of the industry. And I think we're well on our way now. And um, yeah, we just got to keep pushing and keep keep working and yeah, just get ourselves out for there. Sure, for sure. And um, now we meant to do something earlier, I forgot. <laughs> um, do you guys ever watch like, do you know, do you know Stephen Bartlett? Yeah, of course. Dive CEO. CEO, yeah. I don't, I, it's got, I want to do something just for this Melbourne trip because I think it's really cool because a lot of similar people, similar journey, similar podcast. Um, I wanted to get like people to leave a question for the next guest. Too busy chatting to the boys before we forgot. Um, so I'll do yours and then we're going to loop it back around. Um, just one thing because like in, in, the, in the e-com niche, it doesn't have to be this when you leave your question, but there's so many tools out there that people don't know about, software, programs, even AI nowadays. Like what's one thing? Because like let's just leave one little nugget of value forever as an econ brand. What's one cool tool or, you know, software, whatever that you've used and it's added to your business? I would say currently just chat GPT. Yeah. And can, that, yeah. mate, AI, the AI, like, I, I, okay, I think AI should, should be seen as, okay, it's, it's, it's not been me being lazy. It's going to supercharge me. Mm-hmm. I probably save, and my partner, like who, who does like all about media buying, like she, ChatGPT will write a 500 word caption in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and all you have to nuts. do is spend like a couple of minutes proofreading. it. Yeah. So I would say leverage AI, leverage the fuck out of like, uh, out of mm-hmm. AI, especially ChatGPT. And an, another good pl- uh, another good AI platform is called Jasper.ai because that it's an actual copywriting 
AI. Like that will, it'll literally add tonality to your voice, to your, um, copy. To, your, to, your, to your copywriting. And that's one thing that we leverage heavily. Mm. Anything else that you have or? Yeah, I'd probably say the same too. Yeah. That I can think from memory as well. Yeah. Like honestly, like I, um, like it, with AI, it's like part of me is like, I hate that it, that it exists. Like I know because it can supercharge what I do, but I feel like you lose a lot of competitive advantage because a lot of people can do things that maybe they couldn't before. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, it doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's, or how you feel about it. Like people would have their own opinions on AI and the future of tech and how it's going to change society and the way we do things. But it doesn't matter how you feel about it. It's here. It's not coming exactly. anymore. It's here. It's like, do you want to use it for your advantage or, or, or complain about it? Correct. Well, your, your competitors are probably using it. Oh, for sure. hundred so percent they are. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, if they're smart. So yeah, we'll get you guys to leave a question. So um. Yeah, um, that's it. Fucking let's wrap this one up, boys. Thanks for making it, Vlad. Um, soldier and I miss that. All good. Thank um, you. Um, Reva, nice to meet you as well. Thanks for uh, being in Melbourne while I'm here. Perfect <laughs> timing. So, um, excited to watch you boys continue to grow. I'll be keeping an eye out for the retailers as well. Um, what's the best place for people to find either you guys personally or the brand? Where's the best place for people to get to know you guys more if they want more info? Yeah, just on Instagram. Um, you know, at Puri Official and at me, like Reva Botha. Yeah, and Vlad Kosovac. Yeah. Hit us up on socials if I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. I actually do one on one anyway. So if anyone wants any help, I'm, I'm I'm happy to help out. Yeah, I saw your um CRO stuff. So if you have a, a brand looking to yeah. improve your conversion rate and on your website, definitely. And I've just started doing some consulting as well. Perfect, under, bro. So man, sharing the wisdom, pass that on to the to. next gen, hundred percent. You got to. Yeah, thanks, boys, and um, yeah, thanks, thanks again for having us. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it, Cheers, bro. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do your friends a favor and share this with them and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.